Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Jack Murphy Stadium here in San Diego where the Chargers will be hosting the Denver Broncos. This game is meaningless as far as the playoffs are concerned, but there are a lot of other games that mean a lot of things today, Murphy. Certainly are, Charlie. Uh, Broncos already in the playoffs. They've clinched home field in the AFC. But around the league, as we go to the scoreboard, you're going to see that there are a lot of battles left to be decided. Some have already been decided, but some still hanging up for grabs and will be until tomorrow night. And interesting as you take a look, First at the Raiders and the Giants. Giants win the division. And the Raiders are out at Phoenix and Philadelphia game in the fourth quarter. Philadelphia winning. And, of course, if Philadelphia wins, they are a wild card team. Miami now and Kansas City are out of it. That's meaningless. That's the is it. New Orleans wins. Indianapolis loses, so the Colts are out. The Colts are gone now. Pittsburgh still very much alive, although they need a loss by Cincinnati. Green Bay still very much in it. <laughs> And so many things still to be decided today on NBC. For the Denver Broncos, they were strange figures, these ghosts of Christmas past. Super Bowl 21 and the specter of the New York Giants. Super Bowl 22, haunted by painful visions of the Washington Redskins. Then the ghost of Christmas present, spirit, conduct me where you will. Let me profit by the gift of the new Denver defense. And that's not humbug, that's Humphrey. And then the solemn phantom, draped and hooded, can the ghost of Christmas yet to come deliver the Denver Broncos to Super Bowl 24? NBC Sports presents the National Football League. Today, it's the Denver Broncos versus the San Diego Chargers. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Jack Murphy Stadium in San Diego. The temperature, well, we're having a heat wave on this Christmas Eve. The temperature today in the mid-80s. Well, it's low right now, but it promises to climb even higher. The temperature in Denver, well, it's not too bad. It's 44 degrees. Hello, everybody. I'm Charlie Jones. This is Merlin Olson. We have nine rookies starting for these two teams. And of the nine, who has the most pressure? Charlie, I think that's very simple. It would be Billy Joe Tolliver. Always the most pressure on the field, focused on the quarterback. Billy Joe also matched up against John Elway today, one of the great quarterbacks in the NFL. But he's learning. He's trying to earn a job. Humble young man. They said, have you really had an impact so far? Billy Joe said very simply, hey, I'm one and four. I don't think so. <laughs> he always counts the bottom line the numbers of the victories and the defeats. Charlie, I think Dan Reeves is going to treat this game much as he would the final preseason game of the year. So much to lose here today. Injuries, momentum, not a lot to prove. They already have the home field advantage. They're already in the playoffs. So they don't want to do anything that would damage their playoff hopes. Anthony Miller and Jamie Holland are deep as David Treadwell will be kicking off for the Denver Broncos. You can look for Anthony Miller to be returning it. He needs a couple of good ones. 25 yards or more to take over the lead in kickoff returns to the National Football League. That one is 24, so it's right in the neighborhood. Now let's take a look at the San Diego Chargers. And first, of course, we will take a look at their offense. An offensive line that is coming off of an excellent game against Kansas City. Their backs and receivers will feature the running of Marion Butts and they'll complement him with an H-back and two tight ends. On passing downs, Butts, the H-back and one tight end will come out. Darren Nelson comes in the backfield. Wayne Walker and Quinn Early will come in as the wide receivers. And as expected, Marion Butts opens on the ground. Let's take a look at Denver's defense. A defense that is loud, an NFL low of 207 points. When they face the pass, the nose tackle and two left side linebackers will come out. And they are replaced by three defensive backs. Now normally that would give you seven in the secondary. However, rookie free safety Steve Atwater moves up to linebacker where he has been very effective. Little 
play action fake by Billy Joe. Drops it off to Arthur Cox. Cox to the 40. Cox to the 50 and into Denver territory. Charlie, when I see Arthur Cox run, it reminds me of some of the dreams I had as a young man of a tackle carrying the football. And Cox is hurt. You see him limping as he heads for the sideline. But he looks like a tackle or a guard rumbling. Let's see what happens. May have been hit right at the end. Coming from his H-back position, just stares the back off, quick throw into the flat. And now he uses those felt hips to get <laughs> downfield. Looks like he jammed that knee or an ankle, perhaps, as he was tackled. Svelte hips? Svelte hips. <laughs> Swivel hips. He's a tight end. This stands 6'2", 277 pounds. First down at the 48 after the gain of 20. Quick out. Far side is complete to Anthony Miller. I think he might be lying about 270, Charlie. I think he is. When he looked at him yesterday in practice, he's, he's either at 300 mark. Wade Phillips told us yesterday that he worried most about the quick throws into the flat. Tolliver has shown the ability to unload the ball quickly there, has not yet mastered those downfield and deep roots, but so far he's been able to throw short successfully against this defense, and they're off to a good drive. Second down and five. Cuts the remaining back. Parker is in motion, and here's Butts to the outside. He's got nine yards to the 34, and he picks up the first down. Rushing against the defense, Charlie, that is doing a much better job in 1989. They were near the last of the pack, 27th in the NFL in 1988. Look what they've done in 89, as they have improved their defense tremendously, not just against the run, but overall as well. And San Diego with the opening drive, and... And Merle, I think you could say that San Diego has a bit more at stake in this game. Not a lot, but a little bit more than Denver because San Diego wants to win on high. I know it's been a very disappointing season. Play action fake. Right side, and he overthrows the intended receiver, who is Wayne Walker. It'll be second down and 10. Tolliver is a side armor, Charlie. And if he has had a pattern over the four games he started, it's been his overthrowing of receivers. And I think that's typical for a young quarterback who... who Fire it out. Gets a little too much on it. Let's watch the motion here. See if he does unload this ball sidearm. Yeah. Three quarters of the way across. Not pure sidearm. Ball tended to float a little bit him on that pass. Second and ten. Walker's in motion. Tolliver to throw. It's off to Butts and right through his hand. And a little more velocity than Billy Joe Tolliver needed on that one. Very much only has seven receptions on the year. That's an area that they want to work on in the offseason. And from a San Diego standpoint, a lot of the offensive players are going to stay in the area and work out in the offseason. Well, they want to get Billy Tolliver some more work. But Jim McMahon is not out of the picture yet. And, of course, they're still looking to get Mark Vlasic back. Vlasic on physically unable to perform. But McMahon said yesterday, hey, he said, if they'll sign me to a contract, I'll come back and compete for the job. I don't care. I'll take my chances with the uh, training camp next year. Third and ten. Nelson is into the offensive set. Tolliver goes deep, and he overthrows everybody. He was out of time, and he was throwing it away. And it will be fourth down. But with Tolliver and McMahon, assuming that McMahon is signed to a contract, he has no option on his contract, that's a question that maybe Bobby Bethard is going to have to answer if he, as expected, ends up being all, the general manager. All the sources that we talked to here have strongly indicated that it, uh, Bobby Bethard is, uh, it is an imminent signing. Well, with Steve Ortmeyer uh, being fired this week uh, by Alex Spanos, it certainly would seem like a very sure bet at this point. This is a 52-yard field goal attempt. Too many men on the field. Patton coming off. 52 yards away is going to come short. Chris, so a frustrating start for San Diego. Chris Barr in his 14th year just didn't have enough pop on this football. Pretty good hold, but it never got there. 11.48, time remaining. We're in the first quarter, and we have no score between Denver and San Diego. 
Denver's offense this year the Broncos feature a revamped and much more physical offensive line backs and receivers a pair of rookies Bobby Humphrey and Mel Bratton starting as running backs on passing downs now they will come out and Steve Sewell comes into the backfield Michael Young comes in as a wide receiver then the tight end Clarence Kay will go out and another tight end Orson Mobley comes in but he'll come in as the fourth wide receiver Denver first opportunity from their own 34 yard line And Mel Bratton has a couple of yards. It'll be second down and eight. And let's check the 10-minute ticker. Giants still winning big. Philadelphia, they're into the playoffs. Kansas City defeats Miami. And that's meaningless as far as the playoffs with everything else that's going on. New Orleans, Indianapolis. Indianapolis is out. Oh, Lost the game. that could have put them in the playoffs. New Orleans finishes strong. Pittsburgh, they're still, man, they're still alive for the playoffs. Green Bay defeating Dallas. And Green Bay, of course, still alive for the playoffs. The Rams come from behind to defeat New England. Now, that puts another... That complicates that. It complicates that mix, doesn't it? Here's the reverse to Sewell. And he is taken out of bounds by the toast, Alvis Patterson. Let's look at the defense of San Diego. San Diego's defense has been the strength of the team this year. In passing situations, the nose tackle and two inside linebackers will come out. George Hinkle joins the defensive front, and Elliott Smith and Roy Bennett join a secondary that is upset this week because cornerback Gil Bird was not selected for the Pro Bowl. And they felt, Merlin, he really deserved it. Well, and I know the folks up in Denver uh, looking at the uh, paltry pickings, so to speak, yeah. uh, for the Pro Bowl, very upset. And it's been a couple of years since they have been properly recognized with Pro Bowl selections. The ball at the 38. Here is Elway. He fires. The pass is incomplete. It'll be fourth down. Gil Bird had the coverage. Vance Johnson, the intended receiver. And by the way, for Denver, Ricky Natillo. Bothered by that kneecap again. And so he is sitting out this game. And we certainly hope that he is ready in a couple of weeks for the playoffs. Here is a note handed to me. The Rams clinch the wild card with a win today. So the Rams are in. Well, and Green Bay must wait now. Their chance would be if Minnesota loses tomorrow night, they'd win the division and they would be in. So that one's still hanging, but their chance at the wild card apparently would be gone. In fact, is gone, Charlie. Mike Horan kicking. Very high, but not too deep. McConkey with a fair catch at the 34-yard line. So we've got a timeout. 10.50, time remaining in the first period, and we have no score. NBC Sports coverage of the National Football League is brought to you by New Keystone and Keystone Light. Bottled beer taste in a can. Wouldn't that be great? By GMAC, the financial services people from General Motors. And by Pontiac and your local Pontiac dealer. We build excitement. Welcome back to a very warm and very pleasant Christmas Eve here in San Diego. We have no score between the Chargers and the Broncos. Those qualified the playoff picture. We'll come right back to that, and we will. It's uh, beginning to sort itself out, but there's still some sorting to go on. Not as much as there was yesterday. Albert. That's right. <laughs> and Butts is met. He's going to lose a couple of yards. Denver Bronco defense doing what you have to do with a big back, Charlie. You turn him to the sideline. You get those shoulders turned to the sideline. He can't use that power on you. Butts, who is about 250 pounds, has a 40-yard run and a 50-yard run. First game of the season against the Raiders in Los Angeles, so he can rumble for a big man. Second down and 12. Coming up on you, Anthony. Tolliver to throw. Over the middle, through the hands of Butts. Incomplete. So Butts is 0 for 2 as a receiver. Mark Munford had the coverage on him. But something that Tolliver has been struggling with, that is on a short pass, is taking it off and throwing with a touch. He has still got too much velocity, typical of a young, strong-armed quarterback. And he'll have that problem. Elway himself, Charlie, in his rookie year, had real trouble overthrowing the football, just putting too much steam on it put it right through the hands of his intended receivers. Darren Nelson checks into the offensive set, third down and 12. Six in the secondary for the Broncos. 
and Walker goes in motion. Tolliver over the middle, and it is broken up. Walker, the intended receiver. No, is Nelson the intended receiver, and Dennis Smith was there. Dennis Smith, one of those Broncos identified for the Pro Bowl and pleased about it, had his best year since 1984. Big plays all season long, and he's taking a few well-deserved bows uh, along with Greg Cragen and uh, the the punter, or not the punter, but the kicker, David Treadwell, who was ecstatic at being able to go to the Pro Bowl. Oh, he is thrilled. Hank Elisic to kick, and Ken Bell is the return man. Bell will will be returning all of the punts and back on the kickoffs today as Dan Reeves wants him to regain some of that confidence. Here comes pressure. He's bobbled a few this season. This one he stays away from, and it'll go out of bounds. 9.55 left to go. We're in the first quarter, a 46-yard kick, and we have no score. Championship Monday on NBC, January the 1st. Now look at these teams. Auburn, Ohio State, Nebraska, Florida State, Colorado, Notre Dame. If, if there was a college playoff system, conceivably any two of those teams could be in the finals. Those teams are all that good, and they'll all be on NBC on January the 1st. Denver from the 20, Bobby Humphrey. Humphrey to the 27. Number 26, Bobby Humphrey. And speaking of the bowl games, uh, our fabulous foursome will be at the Orange Bowl. Upper right-hand corner. Bobby Bethard. Well, there's that color blue in the San Diego uniform, but he may have an SD instead of an NBC on his pocket very soon. We'll also have... Uh, Reports for you from uh, from the Rose Bowl and from the Sugar Bowl. So uh, stay with us on January the 1st. Second and four. Elway fires and a flag is down. Clarence K on the receiving end. Billy Ray Smith was there. And this, this is the referee. His name is Tom White. Normally he is the head linesman, but Bob McElwee is sick. Tom White has replaced him, and Jim Poole, who lives in San Diego, is now the headlinesman for this game. And this is his first, his first appearance as a referee, so he has a little pressure on him. He's a little nervous. Still has the HL on the back. He's got his line. But he <laughs> has put on well, the white hat. That's right. But anyway, well, the shirt fits. That's an interesting responsibility. <laughs> it is. That'll be fun for him, though. His first announcement. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Holding. 44. Defense, five yards, first down. Well done. Well, I wonder well if he had stage fright down there, Charlie. Of course he did. Of course he did. He should. <laughs> we get a recording of that and we'll send it to him? We ought to do that. It's sitting in his recording of your first announcement. This crowd booed him. <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't because he didn't do a good job. They no, just didn't like the call. They didn't like the call. It's a first down at the 32. Thank you. L.A. is dropped at the 25. <laughs> Leslie O'Neill, he's going to the Pro Bowl. He now has 11 and a half sacks. Last week, the San Diego defense <coughs> was just vicious as they attacked the quarterback. And they get after Elway. Elway wanted Vance Johnson. And had he had just a second longer, Gil Bird, who was locked up and will be all day on Johnson, had fallen down. But Elway ran out of time as Leslie O'Neill closed the noose on him. Pro Bowl selections, Mecklenburg, Smith, Cragen, Treadwell. I missed Mecklenburg a moment ago. Not a good thing to do. Williams, O'Neill, and Miller. Second and 17. Pass is complete far side to Orson Mobley. Mobley a tight end in the four wide receivers. Comes in as a wide out. Bayless with the tackle. Charlie, I mentioned the pressure on Elway last week. DeBerg in Kansas City knocked down 28 times by this defense of San Diego. The victors today in white. The Rams winning. Philadelphia winning. They will be the two wild card teams. Rams at Philadelphia. In the NFC, the Giants ran in San Francisco is in. The two remaining teams, Minnesota and Green Bay. Minnesota wins tomorrow night. They're in. If they lose, Green Bay is in. Much simpler now. Third down and eight. 
Elway has a man open at Sewell, and he can't hang on to it, and he had the first down by a yard. It'll be fourth down. Elliott Smith had the coverage. Chance to watch Elway in action. This pass should have been caught, Charlie, right there, right in the hands of Sewell, who had it and then lost it. Fourth down and eight, Haran to punt. McConkey is the return man. Had a rumor earlier in the week, Perquette said he was going to uh, run for the Senate in the state of New York. He said, uh, I think that's a, that's a bit uh, premature. No score, back in a moment. Hey, we visited with the Chargers and the Broncos, and we now share with you Saturday snapshots. For the second straight week, the Chargers took Wednesday off, but they made up for it in yesterday's practice. Merlin's brother, Phil, former Denver Bronco, who now broadcasts for Utah State, is here with us this weekend. That's offensive guard Broderick Thompson's red cap. I promised to get it on television. Oh, by the way, that's quarterback Billy Joe Tolliver with me. Watch out for your teammates. The Chargers put defensive back Lester Lyle's car on blocks, took the tires, and left it overlooking the practice field. Denver came to town, and rookies Bobby Humphrey and Mel Bratton dropped by for a visit. Bobby Humphrey has the golden touch, but he told us he did leave room for a Super Bowl ring. Coordinator Wade Phillips said his entire defense has contributed to its success, and head coach Dan Reeves wished everyone a Merry Christmas. Saturday snapshots. Had a chance to visit with both teams. That's always fun. That's one of the better parts of, uh, of our job, or visiting with the players and the coaches. No score here, San Diego. With a first down at their own 30-yard line, Butts is the remaining back. And Tolliver will come out throwing. This is a screen, and it is dropped. And that is the third opportunity that Butts has had as a receiver, and he's yet to hold on to the football. Marion Butts coming off his all-time performance, carried the ball 39 times for 176 yards last week. And how big is that for him? How big is that? Well, I'll tell you, you watch him. He's going to drop this pass. Charlie, in his senior year at Florida State, he carried the ball 29 times for 133 yards all year. So... Florida State not utilizing the talents of this young man when he was there. An idea of the depth they had. He was a blocker for Sammy Smith last year when he was there. Tolliver is two for eight as a thrower, but he is has six consecutive incompletions. So they go back to the ground. To the ground, Marion Butts carries, and Carriker makes the tackle. The youngest center in the league, just 21 years old. Courtney Hall, a starter all year long, working on Greg Cragen, nose, toe, nose tackle, who is going to the Pro Bowl. They get a good block inside. David Richards working on him, but Carricker and Dennison, number 55, and Brooks, number 56, showing you why this Denver defense is so tough against the run. And San Diego faces a third down at 11. Nelson comes in, Walker comes in, he's the motion man. Blitz coming from the left side. Tolliver steps forward. Juggle and the drop. Anthony Miller with the sure hands and he had the first down. A strange play as Tolliver showed some good maturity. Felt the pressure. Simply took a couple of steps forward and sidearmed a real rifle shot in there. It certainly looked as if Anthony Miller had plenty of time to control that football. Just watch the end of the play. Tolliver looking to his left comes back inside and finds the man open. Can't can't see anything, any reason to drop that yeah. football, Charlie. Chargers have dropped Idas today in the first quarter. Hank Alisic will kick, and Ken Bell is the return man. Denver has a return on, not that good a kick. And Bell runs past it. And it goes to the 21-yard line. Charlie, Kenny Bell, a strange story on the year, and had pretty good hands but early in the year got into trouble fumbling on the punts in fact fumbled twice against Philadelphia did not make a call didn't warn one of the other backs the ball hit him they lost another football he came back they they cut him they brought him back and they've given him a chance to return but today he just doesn't want any part of that football and there's a late flag dropped at the 37 yard line he just is staying away, and Dan Reeves told us he wanted him there to, to regain his confidence. Wants it to help him get his confidence back and because they feel they might need him for the playoffs. That was a perfect ball to return because it was low and the coverage wasn't there yet. Twice he's run out from underneath it today. Unsportsmanlike conduct 
on the part of the receivers. He blocked after having signals. Penalty is 15 yards, but the dead ball spot is farther back. We'll leave it there. First down. And that is a call against Ken Bell because once you go up with the fair catch, once you give that, you cannot block a man coming down. Now, before they changed it, they'd set up Sabin and really nail him. There you see Kenny Bell, number 35, having given a fair catch signal, lot allowed. He thought that ball might get into the end zone. Just a bad, bad choice. There is the block right there. And, of course, they'll lose yardage as a result of it. The block, though, is at the 37. 15 yards would take it back to the 22. The ball rolled to the 21, so they leave it there. And Bobby Humphrey carries. That was the, the long explanation of the long explanation of the referee. Merlin, let's check out the scores. As we mentioned, most of the spots now decided. Raiders out, Giants in, Philadelphia in, Kansas City and Miami are out. Indianapolis out, as is New Orleans. Pittsburgh, well, they're still, still hoping. They're still hoping. They're a possibility. The Rams are in. Good old Rams. Good old Rams. Back door, but they're in. It, anyway, it doesn't make any difference. Bobby Humphrey. Couple of yards to the 27. It'll be third down and four. Figueroa makes the tackle along with Burt Grossman. So in the AFC, Buffalo will be at Cleveland. And the wild card will play at Denver. And the wild card, Houston is in as a wild card. They will play either Pittsburgh or Cincinnati, depending on whether Cincinnati wins or loses tomorrow night. The Giants are in. San Francisco in. The Rams at Philadelphia in the wild card game. And the other champion will be either Minnesota or Green Bay. Elway, they're going to rule the grass. <laughs> One of the things that we do not expect to see today is a lot of John Elway. Dan Reeves told us early he may only give Elway one quarter. Lee Williams, number 99. Boy, that's a fine inside move on the rookie, Doug, Doug Wydell. And he's got a good grasp on him. That's a good call. But Elway, who is so strong physically, pulls away. But they'll give Lee Williams the sack. Mike Horan will be kicking. Has pressure. He gets a good one off. McConkey, fair catch at the last moment at the 34-yard line. Oh, he, 45 yards on the kick, and guess who was down staring him in the eyes? It was Ken Bell. NBC Sports kicks off its college bowl lineup next Saturday afternoon with the Freedom Bowl. The Washington Huskies take on the Florida Gators. The Freedom Bowl next Saturday afternoon at 2 o'clock Eastern time. The best bowls are here on NBC. No score between San Diego and Denver. And we have just over five minutes to go in the first quarter. And Merlin, I have an impression that both, both teams are slow to get started. Well, it's more understandable on the part of the Denver Broncos. I, I'm surprised we haven't seen a more emo emotional San Diego team. Tolliver goes deep. This may be the emotion. McEwen, the H-back, has the reception, 29 yards at water, saves the touchdown. McEwen, who had played for Dan Henning at Washington, they brought him in to give him a chance, and with Cox out of the ball game, they're kind of swimming some new people into this lineup. He's a pass-down specialist at 220 pounds, not a great blocker, but he is very quick downfield and runs excellent patterns. Was at the right end of that pass by Billy Joe Tolliver. Butts is the running back. A looping timing pattern that Miller went inside and could not get outside in time. Tyrone Braxton was there for the defense. It'll be second down. Talking to Dan Reeves yesterday, and he was... I think amazed as everyone was that this defense could make such huge improvements under a new coordinator, Wade Phillips, in a single year. Now, this defense uh, had really been the Achilles heel for the last few years of this Denver Bronco team, and now the strength of this Denver Bronco team. A real turnaround. Second and ten. Play action. It's intercepted at the 22-yard line. Wyman Henderson with the interception, 22 yards on the return. And Quinn Early makes the tackle for San Diego. And he played it. 
Oh, just like the playbook says. But question, but Charlie, watch the pressure right here on Tolliver. Simon Fletcher, 73, right there, forces the bad pass. That ball is hung up for grabs there. It's a pressure sack situation. The ball being thrown too early, and Tolliver can't get it off with any strength on it. Right here, he's leaning back, feeling the heat right there from one of the league's leading sackers. We've got two of them here today. And not only Fletcher, but Lee Williams, who got a sack just a moment ago. And Denver with a turnover at their own 43-yard line, and they've been putting points on the board this year after turnovers. Bobo, Bobo. San Diego has it back. Now that's something you really hate to do when your defense gets the football for you. Billy you don't Ray want to give it right back. Billy Ray Smith jars it loose, and Plummer recovers it. I think he just lost it. No, he did. You're right. Lee You're Williams right. was leaning in. It's Billy Ray on the yeah. bottom. No, it's Plummer. Plummer. Gary Plummer, number 50. Lee Williams was reaching in. There's the turnover ratio, a plus 7 for the Broncos and a healthy plus 6 for the Chargers. But here's something you got to look at. What do they do with those turnovers when they get a chance to get them? The Broncos have picked up 123 points, have only given up 71, a plus 52. Look at the Chargers. A minus 17. They have not been able to take advantage of their opportunities on the turnover nor stop their opponents when they've given the ball away. They have an opportunity here, and Marion Butts picks up two to the Denver 45. We have no score. We're moving on the four-minute mark time remaining in the first quarter, and with an exchange of turnovers as Craig and Fletcher make the tackle. Maybe both teams will start getting more involved, a little more physical. Does it take a little while this time of the year to get, to get the juices going? Charlie, I think it's simply that there's not that much at stake in this game. We haven't seen the emotional level out of either of these teams that we would expect of NFL teams who are at the end of their season. Parker's the motion man, and here is Butts to the 43. It'll be third down and six. A reminder to our viewers that we'll be selecting the Budweiser most valuable player for today's game. At the conclusion of the game, Michael Brooks making that last tackle for Denver. Several of the additions that have really helped this Denver defense. Alfonso Carriker, a plan B free agent out of Green Bay, and Ron Holmes, a trade out of Tampa Bay. Two of the very big people up front who have helped this offensive or defensive line. And the other thing I really think has helped them, Charlie, Michael Brooks playing so well, and Mecklenburg returning to form, and Simon Fletcher. That's made that front seven so much tougher. Tolliver has pressure, throws it in. Rookie mistake, it's intercepted. Boy, he went into triple coverage. Brad Hankey, number 68, getting some heat on him. They call him Sergeant Carter after the character yeah. on Gomer Pyle. They made him an honorary uh, Marine last week. He's number 68. He'll come from the top of your screen right there. He was the man pressuring on that last play. And twice in a row, we've seen Tolliver cough it up to interceptions under the heat from the Denver defense. And the rookie, Darren Carrington, is the man who has his first interception on the season. And Denver has the ball at their own 37-yard line. And Bobby Humphrey is hit at the line of scrimmage by Gary Plummer. He may get a yard. It'll be second down. I asked John Elway if he would mind stepping aside today and allowing his counterpart, Gary Kubiak, who has come in to sub for him a couple of times, and, well, once this year when he was down with the flu against the Washington, Washington Redskins, yes. he said, no, he said, but the one thing I was sympathizing with with Gary, he said, I didn't have a chance to warm up in practice. We gave him more snaps this week. <laughs> Second and nine. Whoa. Elway, a miscommunication with Vance Johnson. Johnson Elway. read to break, break to the inside. Elway read that he would break to the outside. Well, Charlie, it's kind of hard to make a decision when you got Joe Phillips bearing down on you. But let's watch and see what Vance Johnson does. I mentioned the matchup. Gil Bird will be on him all day. And Bird, number 22, having as good a year this year as any defensive back in the league. Very tight coverage there from Gary Plummer as well, number 50, from his linebacking position. Elway threw that one away. Third down and nine. Shotgun.
Elway's pass is incomplete. Johnson, the intended receiver, right at the first down marker, but it's no good. Gilbert had the coverage, and it'll be fourth down, and Denver will be kicking again. So We've seen about seven catchable balls dropped by these two teams here in the early going, and the punters getting a workout here in the first quarter. Neither team able to generate any kind of an offense. Mike Horan, the punter. Phil McConkey, the return man. Looking for a block. It's not going to be there. And he will be brought down to the 28-yard line. 35 yards on the kick. A yard return. Simon Fletcher makes the tackle. Let's go to the 10-minute to the ticker. And once again, as you look at the... To see how your favorite team did in the AFC. Buffalo, Cleveland, and Denver in the playoffs. Houston is in the playoffs as a wild card. They'll be playing either Pittsburgh or Cincinnati. That will be decided tomorrow night. The Cincinnati-Minnesota game in the NFC. The Giants are in. San Francisco also in. Rams and Philadelphia. That's the wild card game. The other team is either Minnesota if they win. If they lose, it'll be Green Bay in that Cincinnati-Minnesota game tomorrow night. San Diego at their own 28-yard line first down. Tolliver throws deep, and he's all over the park today. Miller, the closest receiver. Wyman Henderson had the coverage. I'm wondering why San Diego doesn't go back to the running attack that was so effective against Kansas City because Tolliver is having a terrible afternoon. Well, they're not able to run it comfortably, and I mentioned earlier that Tolliver had overthrown a number of his passes during his first four starts. Watch how far over the head of an open Anthony Miller this pass is. You're going to complete that pass. You throw it down around his feet. Let him dive for it. We have just under two minutes to go in the first period. Tolliver has thrown 14 passes, only three completions, and he has two interceptions. And some of those weren't close either. He has had a number Th drop. He's had some drops. Charlie. He's had four drops. Here's the screen, and it is incomplete. Darren Nelson, the intended receiver. Randy Robbins at the coverage, but the Broncos' defense has saturated the screen. Defending for the Broncos. And there is Jim McMahon. He's going to stay in town the rest of the week for the Holiday Bowl because uh, his alma mater, BYU, will be playing against Penn State. Also says, I want to get in a little golf before I head back to Chicago where it's too cold to play this time of the year. Get much golf in there. I don't know that we will see McMahon today. That's a question. Tolliver's the man they want to look at. Not much percentage in putting McMahon back into this ball game, but if, I guess if Tolliver gets bad enough, you might see Henning do that. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Tolliver's pass is complete. A flag is down. If it stands up, it's Anthony Miller. Braxton with the tackle. He has the first down. Charlie, I don't know if we can see it, but Carl Mecklenburg just leveled Michael Brooks, his own teammate. He went up to get a hit on the receiver, and Brooks was bumping him, and he just knocked him right on his back. Left side of the play. Wow. And the penalty is going to go against the Chargers. They'll bring it back. Again, the referee is Tom White, scheduled to be the head linesman for this game. But due to the sickness of Bob McElwee, he's the head man. Pass interference, number 83, offense, 10 yards, third down. Anthony Miller gets the call. That used to be, a few years ago, also a loss of down. They said that was just too much. 10 yards is enough. And so they'll get the down over. It'll be third and 20. Pro Bowl receiver, outstanding year, and third down conversions. <laughs> Look at those donuts. The Broncos right up near the top of the league in that category. Just a fraction behind Miami coming into this game for the AFC lead. Third and 20. Tolliver has time, goes downfield. He's got the first down. Quinn Early with the reception. They'll mark it at the 39, close to the 40. He, he got 22. He needed 20. Now the crowd, it's a good crowd for a Christmas Eve and a team that's completely out of it with a 5-10 record. They're into the ball game. Quinn Early, who missed a lot of ball games, Charlie, as you mentioned, with knee problem. Glad to be back in the action. Of course, they're matching him up against the receivers who are, are against the defensive backs who have done so well during this year for the Denver Broncos. Braxton has had a fine year. 
Nelson is in motion, a first down at the 40. But San Diego has decided to live or die by the pass. This is complete to the rookie Wayne Walker at the 37-yard line of Denver. 24 yards, so back-to-back 22 and 24-yard completions for the rookie quarterback. Back-to-back -back confidence builders for Tolliver, who has thrown some real stinkers in this first half. Comes back with a couple of nice passes and has a drive underway. The end of the first quarter is history, and we have no score. Interesting numbers, the statistics, reflecting exactly what we saw in the first 15 minutes of play. Rather pathetic. Rather pathetic and uh, not great defense, just unemotional offense. Report on Dennis Smith. He is out with a groin sprain. Nelson. Has four yards to the 33. It'll be second down and six. Munford with the tackle. You talked earlier about the young center Courtney Hall of San Diego. Number 53 working on 71. We mentioned Cragen going to the Pro Bowl. Courtney Hall, good hands and good strength. There should be a penalty on that one as Cragen goes to the face mask. That's the kind of infighting that the offensive and defensive linemen go through on every play. Courtney Hall has had a fine year, really maturing as the leader of this offensive line. Even though he's the youngest member of this team, youngest rookie in the NFL. Play action fake. Pass is complete. Anthony Miller pulls it in. Braxton. Oh, it's Quinn Early. It's number 87, Quinn Early, the receiver. This game is important because we want to go into the playoffs with momentum and positive thoughts. Well, after the first quarter, I don't think that Denver has either <laughs> one. <laughs> well, certainly not the kind of quarter you want to uh, put into your highlight film, Charlie. And Reeves, not a happy man on the sideline. I mentioned he has other priorities more important than winning this game. But he definitely doesn't want his team to get sloppy here today. First down at the 26. Walker's in motion. Nelson carries. He comes inside maybe a yard. That's going to be all. It'll be second down and nine. Mecklenburg with the tackle along with Simon Fletcher. Reeves showing some emotion on the sideline. Not the kind of coach who gives a lot of pep talks, Charlie. In fact, uh, he's told us over the years that if he has to motivate his players with a pep talk, they better go somewhere else. He expects his players to motivate themselves, but he is animated on the sideline, and he will let people know how he feels on the sideline. I have a feeling he's going to do some motivation at the halftime. We've got a whistle. They may want to reset the clock. They're checking the 32nd clock. Youngest head coaches, Art Shell at 43. Sam White at 44. Dan Reeves at 45. Well, look, look at the year's experience. Nine years as a head coach. 26 years old. He was already a player coach for the Dallas Cowboys. At 36 years old, he took the head job at Denver and has really put together an amazing record. Only one losing season among those nine. And for many years, rumored to replace Tom Landry, I think he's realized he has a much better situation here than you can find anywhere in the National Football League. Second and nine. That knocked away. Ron Holmes. Holmes, who came from Tampa Bay, thrilled to be looking at the playoffs. Hadn't seen one in a long time. Watch number 90. Has really become a dominant force. He's got nine sacks in the last nine games. Look how quickly he is inside. Nelson gets a push on him, but Holmes goes up. That looks like volleyball there. <laughs> Swat. One of those stops right at the line. Third down and nine. Camera work is excellent today. We've got a great crew with us. We're ready on Christmas Eve. We'll celebrate tomorrow. Third and nine. Tolliver far side. He's got Walker. And he is out just shy of the first down marker. Or was that Darren Nelson? It was Darren Nelson. And Randy Robbins makes the tackle. That's the second time that I've misplaced it. 
Well, his numbers of zeros look alike. Watch this play. Tolliver showing you some of the arm strength we mentioned earlier. This is the kind of play that Elway makes with regularity. The defensive back, Randy Robbins, figured he was close enough to close the door on Darren Nelson. But Tolliver, with great arm strength, got the ball there before Robbins could even move. Fourth down and one. This is the kind of ball game you go for. Chargers motivation to end the season with a victory. And it's Butts. He's got it. He had the first down on second effort, gave him an extra yard and a half. This crowd responds. With Arthur Cox out of the game, they've had to go to using Tim Spencer at the H-back position. Spencer not nearly as big as Cox, who's a, an extra tackle or guard in there, and not as experienced in the blocking patterns. That will hurt San Diego's run game today, Charlie. Spencer goes off to the left flank, and it's a first down at the 15. Butts the remaining back. Spencer's now in motion. He becomes the lead blocker. And a couple of yards for Butts to the 13. Second down and eight. Mark Munford with the tackle. What does that do? Because Spencer Reed really doesn't that work that much as an H-back. Well, he's had to practice the position. He knows the responsibilities, but you're spotting quite a bit of weight on that situation. 233 for Spencer, not a small back. But Cox is up around 280. Oh, that's about 50 pounds difference. One other game going on along with ours in the National Football League this afternoon and the 49ers. Have the early lead there. Here we have no score. 10.57 and counting. Time remaining in the first half. Reverse. Anthony Miller. He is out just shy. About a foot away from the goal line. 12 yards. One of the ways to attack a good defense, Charlie, is to attack their strength. This Denver defense very quick at reacting. They get them to key to the sweep and then hit them with the reverse right there. Good blocking on the outside. Simon Fletcher nailed inside. The rookie Atwater gets over there along with Mumford, and I think it was Mumford finally that knocked him out. You see the defenders going to their left. And there's the opening to the outside. Spencer, number 43, with the final block right there on Atwater to get him close to the goal line. Now they are reviewing the end of the play. And we do not have an angle that's going to be decisive here. Watch Mumford. He'll be the man who knocks Miller out. Coming in right there. And it's, of course, oh, as you know, Braxton. That's Braxton, not, that's 34. I thought it was 51. To nine seconds. Thank you. They're looking at, it's, as everybody knows by now, it's the position of the ball if it breaks the plane of the goal, but we really don't have, you know, an angle that's going to show that. Yeah, we gave them as much as we had. Charlie. Tom Keller, the replay official, yes. Mumford was there along with Braxton, but they have that ball bumped up against the goal line, and... Denver's defense with their feet That's in their, their own end zone. Out. And San Diego takes a timeout. That stops the clock. 10.43 left to go. We're in the second quarter. We have no score between Denver and San Diego. A gorgeous Christmas Eve. We have a, a heat wave. The, the, the weather yesterday was a, an all-time record high, and I think today will be a record high. I think it's going to reach to the mid-80s. Charlie, knowing that this broadcast is going out to some parts of the country where the weather has not only been freezing, places like Denver, for example, last Friday, 7 o'clock in the morning, 18 degrees below zero. Don't pack your cars and come out, folks. It's not always this pretty here, and sometimes we have earthquakes out here, too. No, that's, that we better pass that along, Charlie. That's in Northern California. Here, <laughs> it is always like this. <laughs> yeah. We certainly, we almost feel guilty seeing the temperatures at the other game sites today and being here enjoying the beauty of this San Diego day. And now they're resetting the 32nd clock. And we're going to have a little bit of a miscommunication day. One of the reasons we have the rookie referee, Tom White, when, uh, when he came to the ballpark, he thought he was going to be the headlinesman. But due to... Uh, 
Bob McElwee, uh, the, the referee, is sick, and so the, the change there, Jim Poole, has replaced him at the headlinesman position. Yeah, well, a lot of people replacing other people on the field today, including the referee. And Good Butts is defense. going to be stopped. Michael Brooks, number 56, one of the tacklers there. 58 along with him. That's Scotty Curtis at the bottom. Watch this great defensive play. They get Butts turned sideways. Good surge inside. You'll see 56 Brooks right there. He has a hold of him from the backside, and Curtis had his legs. He was going nowhere. Mecklenburg also there, losing about a yard and a half on that play. They're further away than they started moments ago. This drive starting at the San Diego 28. And here is Butts diving, and he is turned away again. It'll be third down and goal to go. 61 Townsend, I think the first man to hit him there, Charlie. But again, lots of white-shirted Denver Broncos. This is, I think, the area in which this Denver defense has improved most. The physical nature of their defensive play. And look at that. Klosterman, 97 there, along with Townsend, number 61. And Brooks again. And Brooks again. Brooks having a great year this year. Very important in the performance of this defense. Not so much the scheme. They just line up and come after you. Third down, goal to go. They'll stop him again. Of Dan Reeves wants some very positive things to look at in this game. He's got one here in that goal line stand. Big play. Spencer trying to lead the blocking again for the 250-pound Marion Butts, but look at that swarm of white-shirted defenders. It was first and goal at the one, second and goal at the two, third and goal at the one, fourth and goal at the four. They're going the wrong way, Charlie. 22-yard <laughs> field goal attempt. Second of the day, he missed an early one. And it is good. The cannon makes it official, and the Chargers lead it three to nothing. This is Charlie Jones and Merlin Olson in the sunshine in San Diego, Jack Murphy Stadium. And the Chargers work on this, and they use this kickoff formation. Now, they'll use it for an onside kick. They show it a lot early, so they can go either way on it. They kind of want the return team to think about things. Look out. Ken He's Bell. Room. And he returns to the 27-yard line. Let's go back to that defensive stand. Charlie, good goal line defense is penetration. Watch the way this Denver defense will knock the offensive line back. And then watch the linebackers penetrating to make the play as they sort their way through. First, the surge by the blue helmets, and you see them knocking San Diego's offensive line back. Now watch the linebackers quickly penetrating. 56, Brooks the first to get there, along with 58, Scotty Curtis again. And Brooks continues to play a brilliant game in the goal line situations anyway. And Although I'd hesitate to say brilliant about anybody here today. Elway, the little shuttle pass back underneath to Bobby Humphrey. Dan Reeves told us he was going to make a decision on the John Elway at the end of the first quarter. He obviously made the decision. He wants to play some of the seconds. Well, I think he's so unhappy with the performance of this offense in the first quarter that he's going to keep Elway on the field. And hoping that this offense will ignite, get things going a little bit. He said he didn't have it hard and fast that Elway would only play a quarter but he wanted to get him out of the game as soon as possible. Second down and six. Mel Bratton and Bobby Humphrey are the running backs. <laughs> Elway has all the time in the world. The pass complete to Vance Johnson. They'll mark it to the 40-yard line. Vance Johnson, one of those that deserved at least an opportunity at that Pro Bowl. He's had 71 passes coming into this game on the season. Catches the beautiful shot here. 
I mentioned again, working one-on-one -on, -one on Gil Bird, the best of the defenders for this San Diego secondary, and he had beaten Bird cleanly on that little comeback pattern. First down at the 40. Humphrey jumps to the outside and goes to the 48-yard line. It'll be second down and two. Vincey Glenn with the tackle. Great running backs just have a way of knowing where the opportunities are and then taking advantage very quickly. Humphrey has good eyes and good acceleration. Just jumps out into the open there and picks up about eight yards before they bring him down. It is low to the right side to Humphrey. It's incomplete. It'll be third down and two. You know, something else that Denver is going to do today, and that is they're going to show a few wrinkles, a few things, because the next team that plays them in two weeks, this is the, the game they're going to come back and look at. So they're going to give them a couple things just to let them think about it. Coaches love to do that. Say, well, they got to spend 30 minutes on this and 30 minutes on that. This will bug them a little, so we'll put it in and make sure that we run it. It's be a little Four, embarrassing eight. to have people looking at numbers like that for Elway in this Bronco offense here in the first part of this ball game. Play action, and the pass is complete. Clarence K has the first down. 14 yards. Elway is not the sprinter he was as a rookie, but he is still a very mobile quarterback. Little naked roll there, and even though he's got pressure from the outside, he just flips that ball downfield. And Clarence K does a good job of getting extra yardage. He already had the first down when he caught the ball. And Les Miller makes the tackle at the 38-yard line. San Diego leading it here by a score of three to nothing. And right now for a news update, let's go to NBC News in New York City. We interrupt this program for an NBC News special report. Here is Mary Alice Williams. NBC News has just learned that Panamanian dictator General Manuel Noriega has been found. Just a few minutes ago, we received reports that Noriega, who'd been on the run since the U.S. invaded late Wednesday night, has turned himself in to the papal nuncio in Panama. That is the equivalent of the Vatican Embassy, Noriega, apparently asking for political asylum there. Here is General Maxwell Thurmond, head of the U.S. Southern Command. Uh, a few minutes ago, we received a report that Mr. Noriega had presented himself at the papal nunciariat and turned himself in for political asylum. Now you know all I know. Do you believe this report? I have the report, and uh, I'm acting on the basis that it is true. General Thurman. That's all I'm going to say is what I said. Yes. General Thurman, can you can you tell me what what is the papal nuncio? The papal nuncio is, of course. Pope John Paul II's representative in Panama, the nunciariat, uh, the equivalent of an embassy from the Vatican to the government of Panama. NBC News will keep you posted on this very important development. One of the, the top uh, strategies and goals of the U.S. invasion in Panama. As soon as more information comes in, I'm Mary Alice Williams. This has been an NBC News special report. We now rejoin the program already in progress. And while you are away, the Denver Broncos have just taken the lead from 12 yards out. A little shuttle pass to this man, Bobby Humphrey. We'll show that to you right after the uh, extra point attempt by David Treadwell. And it is good. And Denver goes up by a score of 7-3. to three. Quick little shuttle pass right here. Underhanded flick right there to Humphrey, who has no trouble getting in. But the most interesting part of this play, which we'll show you 
in a few moments was Elway's confrontation with our referee. We'll come back after this commercial and we'll give you a look at that. Seventy-two yards on the scoring drive in eight plays, and it took only two twenty-three for Denver to take the lead, seven to three. Now with five fifty-six, time remaining in the first half, and David Treadwell will be kicking off. Jamie Holland and Anthony Miller are the two return men, and we look for number eighty-three, Anthony Miller, to be the return man. We mentioned earlier he needs two returns to qualify for the leadership and kickoff returns in the league. He needs to average around twenty-five yards a return. He got twenty-four the first time out. And when uh, head coach Dan Henning told us about this yesterday, we said, any chance that Jamie Holland will return? He said, not the first two. You can count on that. You better believe it. Anthony will get this one on the dead. No, Holland. Holland yes, he will. Holland hands it off to him. But he wishes he hadn't given him that one. That's going to be a very short return. Let's go back, Charlie, to that last play. You're going to see Leslie O'Neill, 91, come in and knock Elway right on his back. Now watch the play, turn it loose, and watch O'Neal coming in from the right-hand side of your screen. The ball is gone. One, two, clearly a late hit. Now watch Elway. He's going to jump up. Keep it rolling. Keep it rolling. Watch Elway. Jumps up, and he's right in the face of Tom White. He continued that confrontation on for quite a while toward the sideline, furious with the new referee for not calling roughness on that play. And Charlie, he's right. He is right. The return, by the way, for Anthony Miller was 15 yards. And Tolliver comes out throwing it. It's intercepted. Randy Robbins. Billy Joe Tolliver had five touchdowns and only four interceptions coming into the day. That's his third interception of this afternoon. One more, he'll have equaled his four from the four games in which he has started. This is just a bad pass and a good jump by Randy Robbins. And I'm sure, Charlie, the rookie is looking at his receiver all the way, which is deadly when you play against a good defensive backfield. And Gary Kubiak is now the quarterback for Denver. So as soon as Elway took the Broncos on that touchdown drive, Reeves made the change. He said he wanted Kubiak to get some more quality time when the game was still on the line. And Bratton is the ball carrier. And Mel goes to about the 38-yard line. Let's go back to that John Elway play. And I want to say, a, I want a word or two as the counsel for the defense of the referee. The end of the play is what we're concerned about. 91, Leslie O'Neill. You see O'Neill? One one and a half to Charlie. Oh, Watch right. Elway now. Elway up. Absolutely furious. Oh, he's right. With Tom White. Oh, he's right. He's absolutely right. And Who it should have been defend, called. Charlie? Who do you know? I have a word for the defense. <laughs> not, a, not a big word. It's a little word. Mel Bratton close to the first down. And while they check that out, you have a referee who is a headlinesman. And as a headlinesman has specific responsibilities looking at specific areas. He is not used to, first time he's ever been a referee, he's not used to looking for that. Now he will be aware of it. He wasn't aware of it. Now he will be aware of it. That's, that's fair. He was Charlie. wrong. That's fair, Charlie. You know, but in his defense. Very fair. Thank but you. Uh, he'll remember it. <laughs> yes, but, uh, but my client still, uh, still loses, right? <laughs> much like the learning that young quarterbacks do, much like the learning that Billy Joe Tolliver is doing today. It's painful. Yes. Third down and one. And Denver has the first down. And at this point, we, we feel that we're going to see, that was Bobby Humphrey carrying, we'll start seeing a mix of running backs. We, we expect to see Sammy Winder, we expect to see Jeff Alexander working in and out of there all the time. Plummer and Phillips making the last tackle, and it's a first down at the 34-yard line. Two yards, Broncos first down at the Chargers 34. going to lose a couple. Bert Grossman and Leslie O'Neill were waiting for them. Check out all the scores. And in case you joined us late, here is another reminder. 
in the playoffs in the AFC Buffalo Cleveland and Denver Houston is in as a wild card they will play either Pittsburgh or Cincinnati depending on the outcome of the game tomorrow night Cincinnati at Minnesota in the NFC the Giants are in San Francisco also in Rams at Philadelphia in the wild card and the other division champion will be either Minnesota or Green Bay depending upon the outcome of that game tomorrow night Bonnie Smith in for Jim Juriga left guard Charlie Kubiak to throw, second down, rolls, throws. The receiver, Michael Young, had to come back and is not going to have the first down. He had it at about the 24-yard line, but came back to help out the quarterback and is going to be about a yard shy of the first down. Gilbert had the coverage. One of the blocks that Dan Reeves has used to help rebuild this offense, and Michael Young, a plan B acquisition from the Rams, has been much more effective as a Bronco than he ever was as a Ram. He's caught 21 passes, but a lot of those have been very big plays. He seems to have increased his speed here, and he loves catching the ball from Elway. Of course, he's catching it from Kubiak. He likes that, too, Charlie. Third down and one at the 25. And the defense was waiting for Mel Bratton and as Gary Plummer, the leading tackler for San Diego, along with pro bowler Leslie O'Neill. Charlie, we showed that car up on blocks earlier, that car that belonged to Lester yeah. Lyles. It was Gary Plummer. Lyles had hidden Plummer's car early in the year. So Plummer got even. He got, he got Lyles' keys. They took his car out by the practice field. They took the wheels off, put it up on blocks. They said they were going to put the four wheels back where the car was originally that was too mean but uh, football players are a little bit cruel that was Gary Plummer's way of getting even with Lester Lyles and we'll take the countdown to the two-minute warning the score is Denver 7 and San Diego 3 we'll be back in a moment well for all of those on Christmas Eve that face the same problem that I always face uh, we didn't get our cards out in time Merle and I were going to send one to each of you but we figured we'd save a little money and we have our Christmas card here a very lovely Christmas card and not only does it look pretty <laughs> Christmas greetings everyone Forty-three yard field goal attempt by David Treadwell. And it is no good. It is off to the side. So the score remains Denver seven. Wait a minute. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. There was a flag. I thought we were going away. And it's against San Diego. It will give Denver a first down. They'll have the opportunity to continue this drive. Personal foul. And Dan Henning can't believe it. Gunter Cunningham is defensive line coach in front of him there. Are they saying it was on Leslie O'Neill? Well, we know Leslie, Leslie O'Neill is not happy. He's not happy. We know that. And we will receive the official word. Personal foul on the play. Personal foul, defense, hands to the head, after the kick, post possession, half the distance to the goal line, first down, San Diego. It is a post possession foul that means after the kick, so possession had already changed. And San Diego had possession, and so San Diego's offense will come out on the field. No, no, Charlie. No? They're giving it back. Well, yes, they are. You're right. Huh. <laughs> Denver's offense was still out on the field. Well, we had... It would appear that it might be Grossman, number 92, working inside on Monty Smith, number 65, but that may be unfair to Grossman. Since the referee didn't call it, maybe we better not do that. But you're right, Charlie. If it's post-possession, the ball has been given up, and they've got to uh, let San Diego have the ball. The officials meeting on the sideline to make sure that they are all in sync on that decision. Signed by Leslie O'Neill. We have a personal foul, post possession by the receivers, 
they were entitled to the ball at the 26, half the distance, puts it on the thir <coughs> 13, first down. The reason, of, the, of course, you know, as, as you follow pro football, is that they had given up the ball on the field goal attempt. Once you kick it. Once you kick it. And so after that, it's called post-possession, so the, our possession had changed. But it was interesting because at one time we had both offenses out on the field. <laughs> both ready to snap now, the ball. Now, that would have been an interesting matchup, yeah. Charlie. Dan Reeves is discussing this, and meanwhile, we'll take a timeout. 156 left to go, first half. Denver leads it 7-3. to three. San Diego's ball, first down at their own 13-yard line. 156, time remaining in the first half. And this is Darren Nelson coming to the outside. Tolliver to throw. He goes deep to Miller. It is incomplete. Kip Corrington broke it up. We've been told that it was not Burt Grossman on that penalty, but Joe Phillips instead. And here's Phillips, number 75. Let's watch him on that attempted field goal. He drives into his man, number 65, Bonnie Coleman, and drives, that's Whitell, I think, 67, and he's got the hands right in the face. You see him with the hands to the face. They're saying that that was after the ball was kicked. So Phillips, who's about 300 pounds, driving on the rookie and just put the hands up to the face of Doug Whitell. Tolliver incomplete. Tolliver now in the first half, seven of 23, 113 yards, and three interceptions and seven overthrows and about four <laughs> drops and a partridge in a pear tree. Yeah. Charlie, I don't, I don't think it's the first half that he's going to mark down as his favorite time and there's somebody who will help him to remember some of the rough spots because Dan Henning wanting very much to see this young rookie with all of his strength his leadership capabilities reminds a lot of people of Sonny Jurgensen, yeah. young Sonny Jurgensen. But uh, Sonny threw the ball a little better than Billy's thrown it today. Third down. Has the first down. Anthony Miller pulls it in. Carrington with the tackle. 14 yards, first down. They'll come out quickly and they'll go right back to the line. No huddle. Two minute offense. 127 and counting. Denver leads it 7-3. Tolliver goes deep far side and he overthrows. Eighth overthrow. Anthony Miller, the intended receiver. Your Pro Bowl receiver and you feature him as much as you can. And Dan Henning, I'm sure eager to see his finish, uh, season finish properly. They played a very fine game last week against Kansas City. Many felt, and I think we were certainly among that group, that Kansas City playing some of the best football in the league in the last part of the season. I thought they were headed for the playoffs. They certainly looked to be that way, but they went back last week, and Henning's Chargers just really carved them up. Really carved them up, offensively even, and defensively. Even more impressive, San Diego, warm weather team against Kansas City, a cold weather team, and it was a cold day. Reverse. Miller. Looks for a block. The same play that they came close to scoring on, and Anthony Miller showing some excellent running ability. The play designed to go left. There were just too many defensive bodies there, and Anthony Miller will bring it all the way back across the field. Watch this. Number 83 right there. No room outside. He goes back against the grain, and Tolliver gets a good block on the far side. Woo, bang. That right was Nelson there. that picked Nelson. one up, too. All right. Yes. Tolliver got a block himself. Yep. So the rookie quarterback getting his licks in on the day. For the Chargers, 12 games have been decided by seven points or less, and they won only three of those 12. Well, they have had an extremely disappointing season. I'll tell you, Charlie, they're much better than the 5-10 the and 10 record that they sport right now. 25 yards in the last play to the Denver 45. And this pass is complete to McEwen. And Randy Robbins makes the tackle. 38. We've got a timeout. We have exactly one minute left to go in the first half. Denver 7, San Diego 3. The Chargers on the move. And let's check in and see what's going to happen at halftime. Well, of course, it'll be NFL Live. OJ and Bob Costas. 
And the headlines of NFL Live, Al Davis, his Raiders need an intimate stadium as a home for the 90s. 90,000 is a nice intimate number. No, I'm just making that up. Sam White, his team's 61-7 win over Houston Oilers last week, affected the Oilers last night. Bobby Beathard, Cowboys will dismantle scouting system. Jimmy Johnson, responsible. And there they are. O.J., Bob, the first enforcement, the insiders. And Bob and O.J. scores and highlights Tom Brokaw with the latest update on what is going on worldwide. A dramatic times for us, Charlie. Yes. They point to the insignificance of our trivial battles on this green carpet in front of us, don't they? They really do. You're, you're absolutely right. Second down and three at the 38. Tolliver, now he's on target. Anthony Miller. Hurry up offense again. First down, 15 more yards. Again, a power pass. You could almost visualize Elway locking on the receiver and rifling that ball. Tolliver looks, bumps, has it in all alone over Thornton. Experience. Billy Joe. You need to temper it down and just loft it over the top. Good fake here. Watch the long arm fake. That's what sets up the play. The second move breaks the receiver open. The defender clearly beaten, but you just got to drop that ball in there. Billy Joe will watch that one many times, and he'll say, come on now, come on now. Got to make that play. Nelson was wide open. His ninth overthrow in the first half. 35 seconds left to go in the first half. Denver 7, San Diego 3. Tippo picking up a little bit after a very sluggish first quarter. Tolliver getting into a better rhythm in that particular drive, too. Needs That's to finish it up. And too much time? No. He just stops the clock. He didn't like what he saw. Or was it too much time? The reset on the clock, Charlie, down below. And Tolliver just stepped away. He just put the ball to the ground. He was out of time and decided that's the best thing to do. And then a uh, quick regroup. He's only got 35 seconds left. That's the 30-second clock that you're looking at there. The game clock is 35, 35 seconds. 35 seconds. Uh -huh. So we've got enough time for a couple of plays. Has pressure. Incomplete. Carl Mecklenburg, big number 77, right on Tolliver's heels. Mecklenburg going back to the Pro Bowl again. 77. Boy, I tell you, those sevens have been lucky for Denver. There are two of them on Carl Mecklenburg's back, and Elway, where's the other one? Mecklenburg and Elway playing in their 100th games today for these Broncos. He's been running a bit. This heat, I'll tell you, the heat hurts a team that practices in the cold. Even though they've been working inside in their dome, it's cold there, and your conditioning tends to fail you a little bit late in the year. Chris Barr, 42-yard field goal attempt. And he has it. So he has hit from 22 and 42 and missed from 52. And San Diego has pulled within one with 25 seconds left to go in the first half. And on Saturday, January the 13th, Sports World takes you to beautiful Honolulu, Hawaii. You and I are going to be there. Looking That's fun. Tell me about you. We're, we, we'll be doing the telecast, but you played in the Hula Bowl. Tell me how that game is. Charlie, I played in the Hula Bowl back in 1962. Had a chance to play in the old stadium there, not as nice as the new one. And they had a, a storm that night. It got so, or that afternoon, it got so wet that we were all covered with this thick, gooey mud. You couldn't recognize the guys on your own team. I knocked down one of my own teammates on an interception. I, I thought he was coming and I was going to block him. He said, hey, I'm on your side. But I'm looking forward to going back. If I go loved playing in that game. If it's going to be that way, I don't want to go with you. <laughs> no, it's, I won't knock my teammates down. I promise, Charlie. <laughs> An exciting time for these college seniors getting a chance to play against the best. Ken Bell from the one to the 20. 
There's a nice return out across the 30-yard line. And be sure to be with us on Championship Monday. We'll start off with the Hall of Fame Bowl. Auburn, Ohio State. Merle and I will be at the Fiesta Bowl along with Jimmy Cephalo, Nebraska, Florida State, the Orange Bowl, Colorado, and Notre Dame. Oh, those are three great ball games. All starts January 1st. Coverage beginning at 1 p.m. Eastern time. And Bob and O.J. and the insiders will all be hosting it from the site of the Orange Bowl. Now, I know that a lot of people listening us to us today, uh, Buffs fans. Oh, oh rooting yeah. for those. The whole state of Colorado oh, is yeah. ready to go. Got to believe that they are excited. Their team already in Miami to try and practice in some of that warm weather. And I'm excited for them. I think it's a great, I think it's just great for the, for the school in the state. Just a final ad. It's cold in Miami right now. <laughs> get it. They're having a cold wave down there. <laughs> Snowed in Tallahassee. I wonder, Florida State is down there probably saying, what in the world is going down? Colorado's bringing their own weather with them. Brought it with them. And there is the official countdown. It is halftime. Sluggish first quarter. Some action in the second period. The Denver Broncos 7 and Elway to Humphrey 12-yard pass and a pair of field goals for San Diego. Denver 7, San Diego 6. It is halftime on Christmas Eve. Welcome back to our NFL Live studios in New York. Bob Costas along with O.J. Simpson. Merry Christmas once again, everybody. Denver leading San Diego in the game you're watching 7-6 at halftime. The Broncos trying to finish at 12-4, which would be three more victories than anybody else in the conference. Yeah, well, the interesting thing about uh, Denver is that by winning and having the best record, they may get the toughest game, the, uh, their first game in the playoffs. They could very well end up playing Houston, a team that Bobby Beathard thinks can beat them, or Cincinnati, a team that we know has the talent to beat anybody. All right, quickly through all the scores here, beginning with that Denver score of 7-6 to six over San Diego. Chicago is playing at San Francisco. 49ers will have the best record in all of football. They're trying to finish up at 14-2. and two. Joe Montana throws a 29-yard touchdown pass to Jerry Rice. For Rice, his 17th TD of the year. Dalton Hilliard leads the NFL. He has 18 for New Orleans. 16-0 San Francisco at halftime. The Bears in jeopardy of closing the year with six consecutive defeats. Now, these are all finals from earlier today. The Giants clinch the NFC East and eliminate the Raiders from wildcard consideration. 34-17 at the Meadowlands. This was a big play. The rookie kick returner, Dave Meggett, who is going to the Pro Bowl, takes the Raiders' first punt of the game early in the first quarter, breaks tackles, slips tackles, and there he goes. 76 yards for the TD. The Raiders fought back, tied it at 17 at halftime, but the Giants dominated in the second half and won it, and with it, they took the title in the NFC East, leaving Philadelphia to settle for a wild card, which they claim by beating Phoenix 31-14 to in Philadelphia. The Eagles go 11-5. and Phoenix 5-11 and lost their last six straight, including the last five after they fired Gene Stallings. Kansas City beat Miami twice this year head-to-head. -head. Neither team going to the playoffs. 27-24 to is the final there. 98 yards on the ground for Christian Okoye, who finishes with 1,480, and that leads the National Football League 10 yards better than Barry Sanders, the great rookie for the Detroit Lions. We'll tell you about Sanders in just a minute. Indianapolis could have been a wild card. They didn't need any help. All they had to do was win at New Orleans today. It didn't happen, not by a long shot. It was close at the half, 10-6, to but the Saints romp in the second half, 41-6. to Neither team going to the playoffs. Pittsburgh with a shot at making it to the playoffs after that disastrous start when they were outscored 92-10 to in their first two defeats. They finished the year at 9-7. and They win today at Tampa Bay, 31-22. to Green Bay is 10-6. and Dallas 1-15 and for the year. 20-10, to the final score today in Dallas. The lone victory for Jimmy Johnson's team this year deprives the Washington Redskins of a trip to the playoffs. The L.A. Rams clinch a wild card. They go 11-5. They had to sweat at New England. Greg Bell rushed for over 200 yards, including a three-yard run in the waning seconds, to give them the lead at 24-20. But Steve Grogan brought the Patriots down the field, got them first and goal at the five with nine seconds to go. The first two passes fell incomplete. Now this one, as time expires, back in the end zone, no good. Double zeros on the clock. This is the Packer locker room in Dallas. They were hoping for a Ram loss, which would have given them another avenue to the playoffs. As it is now, they can't be a wild card. Their only chance is to be the champions of the NFC Central if the Vikings lose tomorrow night at home against the Bengals. Detroit 
and Atlanta. Detroit wins this one 31-24 before a crowd of 7,792, smallest in Falcon history. Atlanta finishes 3-13. and They will get the first pick upcoming in the uh, college draft. Barry Sanders had 158 yards on the ground today and three touchdowns. The Heisman Trophy winner in his rookie season rushes for 1,470 yards, just 10 back of Christian Okoye for the league rushing title. Now to the playoff picture. We start with the AFC. These teams have clinched. The Broncos, the Bills, and the Browns as division champions. The Oilers, though they lost their last two, get a wild card at 9-7. and seven. They clinched it when the Colts lost at New Orleans today. Who will the other wild card team be? It'll be the Bengals if they beat the Vikings tomorrow night at the Metrodome. If the Bengals lose, then the Steelers are the wild card. If the Steelers get in, they play at Houston in the wild card game. If the Bengals get in, what a matchup to savor. Glanville and Weish renewing acquaintances just two weeks after the 61-7 demolition at Riverfront. The Oilers would come back to Cincinnati. Now to the NFC we go. These teams have clinched. The 49ers and the Giants as champions of the West and the East, respectively. The Eagles and the Rams are the wildcard teams. The only thing left to decide is the champion of the NFC Central. The team that finishes second here cannot be a wild card. The second place finisher will be eliminated. The Vikings get the title if they beat Cincinnati tomorrow night. If, however, they stumble, then the Packers move into the playoffs as champions of the NFC Central. We will see you next Sunday. We don't know the starting time yet. For the AFC wild card game, OJ will join me along with the insiders, Bobby Bethard and Ralph Wiley. It's either Pittsburgh at Houston or Houston at Cincinnati. We're going to take a station break here. When we come back, we'll turn it over to Tom Brokaw of NBC News. There are new developments in the situation in Panama, and we'll get to that following these messages from your local stations. This is Charlie Jones and Merlin Olsen, San Diego's Jack Murphy Stadium. Halftime, where Denver is in front of San Diego by a score of 7-6, to six, a very lethargic first quarter. Charlie, not a lot at stake. Uh, obviously, uh, San Diego completely out of the picture at five and ten, and they're they're trying to look good. I mean, there are, there are certainly incentives for them to play well today. There are contracts to be negotiated. Uh, there are people to be designated as Plan B free agents who will be free to do some roaming around and and positions on next year's team. A, a lot of personal things, but not a lot to worry about as a team. Now, for the Broncos, they've already determined they are the AFC's winningest team. They've got home field advantage for the entire playoffs. And it's difficult, I think, to get out there and say, hey, get it going. The big difference in football games is not differences in talent. It's not differences uh, in ability. It's differences in emotion. And that's what we saw, two teams without emotion in that first quarter. Then, six and a half minutes into the second quarter, something happened that all of a sudden both teams became very emotional and all of a sudden we had a football game the competitive juices uh, <laughs> are there there they just needed to be activated and they were activated in this first half by a goal line stand by the denver broncos and for three plays in a row the ball was locked up inside and denver played very emotionally and aggressively look at that swarming defense the response was positive on both sides Denver ended up coming back for a touchdown a short time later, and uh, Kansas, or not Kansas City, but San Diego uh, picked up the pace, and they were able to get things going much better here in the second quarter. Oh, yeah, all of a sudden, Tolliver started making some connections, and, the, and they were moving the ball. Now let's talk about Denver. When we talked with Dan Reeves yesterday, he said he was afraid the team would not play with emotion, would not play hard, and if they did not do that, there was always a specter of injuries. He said, if you're not going 100%, Charlie, there is the chance that you get hurt. And I certainly subscribe to that. If you're being careless on the field, if you got sloppy in your performance, that's the time that you are liable to take a shot. And uh, Dan Reeves worried, I think, more than anything else about getting out of this game with his team healthy. Going into the playoffs, there are a couple of things you like to have going. You'd like to be healthy. You'd like to have your best players there. You'd like to be balanced. And certainly the Broncos are a balanced team. That's uh, of the rebuilding things that they've done this year. They have worked to develop that running game, to develop that more physical defense, to balance out in some uh, positions where they've been weak. And you want big play capability. And they've proven to have that, too. So they have some real pluses going into the playoff. Don't want to lose it here today. All right, here are the halftime statistics. Look down at it as the Broncos have only six first downs to Chargers 11, but they were able to get that one sustained drive together. And Denver will have the ball to start the second half. 
Darren Carrington is the return man. And the Broncos will move on offense from their own 29-yard line. Just a couple of quarters away from a few days rest and then back for preparation for the playoffs for the Broncos. A lot of players, Charlie, talking about having a few days to spend with their families. Some will be flying home to various parts of the country. Others have flown their families out to join them for the holidays. So it is a holiday time. It uh, doesn't matter whether your season's over or it's going to continue. There's still going to be a little time to enjoy the holiday. Kubiak, a little play action fake, rolls back to this side, slips the tackle, and slides to the 35-yard line. So he has six. It'll be second down and four. When I came to the stadium and I walked in, I got on the elevator. There were a couple of Bronco players, so I rode down a couple of levels with him, and they were, they were talking about the same thing. It's a beautiful, beautiful day. Beautiful weather. Doesn't seem like Christmas. It is Christmas in Denver, but it doesn't seem like Christmas here in San Diego. You better believe it's Christmas in Denver. <laughs> colder than that this you can't have a prettier day than this but it you're right doesn't look like Santa's going to arrive although Santa got here <laughs> Santa did Santa got here yes. earlier today oh intercepted diving interception did he have possession I think he did Vipsy Glenn was going for it they're going to I, let's see I think it's an interception he drops it after the fact Charlie Vipsy Glenn who had missed a chance to sack Kubiak on the play just prior to this he was the man that dove at Kubiak and missed him so angry at himself he comes right back emotion Charlie pumped up came back and made that big play and even though the game has uh, as we have discussed several times has no reflection upon the outcome of the season I would expect that there are some emotional words exchanged in the locker room at halftime maybe more by the players or the coaches is come on let's get going well you don't want to embarrass yourself doesn't matter what's on the line Charlie you don't want to embarrass yourself I think uh, Tom White talking to the side judge and the, the play is ruled as an interception with a fumble and then down by contact. And so Vincey Glenn has the interception. That is his fourth of the year. Vincey Glenn, when he hits the ground, initially has not been touched by an opponent. He has to control the football. Once he had done that, then the ball was fumbled and he covered it. He was then tapped by one of the Denver Broncos but the ball has gone over so the the Broncos who have been prone to the turnover as have the Chargers today and what do we got here a review the umpire had stepped over the ball and usually that's a dead giveaway that uh, he has received information from the replay booth that they do want to take another look at it let's see if we can see what happened on that play Vincey Glenn right here just turning to come in and accelerate on the receiver and that's Sewell right there steps in front takes the football hits the ground has control of the football yep. Ooh, well does he okay but did he did the ball hit the ground hmm. well maybe we can see it again continue play after review the play stands the play stands as seen by the officials here's one more quick look at it a good anticipation, uh, you know, for the diving interception. And then the body still, you know, and then the ball kind of jars loose. But, but I uh, think, Charlie, even though the ball is loose, it, it never hit the ground. It never hit the ground because his body was his underneath shoulder. it. You're right. You're right. Good point. San Diego has the ball at the Denver 41-yard line. Tolliver, a quick out to the far side is complete. And that's Craig McEwen on the receiving end. Sidearm throw almost got Tolliver in trouble as he had to throw around a couple of defenders on that play. Gain of five, second and five. And it's a day like this that many, many years ago, the first announcer said the shadows are creeping across the field of play. I don't but think they're creeping here today. <laughs> they're attacking the field. They are. And here's Marion Butts. And he's got just a yard, maybe two, to the 34. It'll be third down and three. Rick Dennison and the, the shadows and the contrast really, uh, really do play havoc with our video. Making it very difficult. Charlie, one of the things that the San Diego Chargers did early in this year to try and beef up this team is to bring in a couple of big tackles, Brett Miller and Joel Patton. 
couple of 300 pounders, 6'7", both of them. But they really have not been as productive at those tackle positions as they wanted them to be. They may be out in that uh, plan B market again if it survives uh, the onslaught of the Players Association. Third down, Tolliver, he's throwing it away. Everybody was covered, he was out of time. Tolliver yeah. showing some real pain as he took a shot on that play. He is a tough kid. He is really a tough one. He looks more like a linebacker in practice, doesn't he? Well, he's got a little bit of that linebacker toughness to him. Last week in that ball game, uh, he went in to protect Arthur Cox, a 280-pounder. You've got to be, when a quarterback goes in to, to help a 280-pounder, you know that there's some real strength in him. As McMahon may get called on here later in this ball game. They're talking to Tolliver on the sideline. Chris Barr from 53 yards away and makes it. His longest of the year. And the Chargers have the lead. How sweet it is. And that is all foot and ball. There is no win today. The Chargers 9, Denver 7. We'll be back with a kickoff in a moment. And Chris Barr, who just booted that 53-yard field goal to give the Chargers the lead, will be kicking off with Darren Carrington and Ken Bell, the return man. At the goal line, it is Carrington. To the 20. Nice return near the 30-yard line. Martin Bayless makes the tackle. And so San Diego, with the interception, capitalized on it. It did. NFL Live next Sunday, Bob Costas, O.J. Simpson, the wild card game. It will be Houston against either Cincinnati or Pittsburgh. Cincinnati plays Minnesota tomorrow night. If they win, they are in. If they lose, Pittsburgh is in as the wild card. And putting rib guards on Billy Joe Tolliver on the sideline as Tolliver took a shot to the ribs on that last play. They've got the pads in place. They're now putting an ace bandage around to hold them down Denver is on the ground with Mel Bratton Charlie let me finish that yes. quick story about Billy Joe Tolliver last week against Kansas City he thought he had a shot of he saw uh, Derek Thomas a rookie linebacker for Kansas City kick Arthur Cox his tight end and Tolliver went in to defend and uh, just about got himself tossed out of the game. Derek Thomas was thrown out of the game, and we asked Dan Henning if he'd ever had a quarterback, a quarterback called for a, a roughness call. He said, yes, David Archer down in Atlanta, but he said, you don't see it very often. I have never seen that myself. I'm not, I'm not sure that I've ever seen one. Well, I, I think, think so. Tolliver earned the respect of all of his teammates with that little act, and, and I think he's tough enough that we're going to see him back in this ball game. Yeah, he's pulling the jersey back on and getting ready to play some more. Bobby Humphrey carried, and Gary Plummer made the tackle. First down for Denver at their own 40. He does want to work on those numbers. He doesn't he, want to go with that kind of a taste. He'd like to mouth. whittle on him a bit. And huh. the Broncos right now would like to put a long drive together, eat that clock, and put some more points on the board. Mel Bratton. Cedric Figaro with a tackle at the 40. Interesting, when we talk with Mel Bratton, he's so, uh, yesterday, very, very soft-spoken young man, and he talked about coming back off of the knee injury, and when he had the knee injury, he said everybody, nobody looked him in the face, they'd all look down and see how the knee was. Check his legs. Of course, he went through a real traumatic year, drafted by the Miami Dolphins. Would have been the first player ever to grow, grow up, go to high school there, Miami University, and then play with the Dolphins, but elected to sit out, go back through the draft, and came to Denver. He said, I think I made the right choice. I feel good about the way things have turned out. He did make the right choice. QBX pass, incomplete. There's no fly. Vance Johnson saying Ooh. he had Gil Bird all over the back of his I legs. Think, I think Bird got there a little early. May have gotten away with one. Let's watch that battle again. Bird giving Vance tremendous respect. Johnson runs him off and comes back against the grain. Where's the contact there. here? Right oh, there. Oh, before, yes. Yes. 
still waiting on the flag. Not reviewable, but Vance Johnson very ticked at that <laughs> point, and you can't blame him. That's the referee, Tom White. You see, it's not his call. He's at the opposite end, but there should have been a flag, but there wasn't in his third down. Kubiak from the shotgun, stumbles a bit, scrambles out, and he will be dropped. Another sack to add to the total. Bert Grossman, he Grossman. now has nine on the year. As he continues to make an impact. Nine sacks in the last eight games, Charlie. These little quarter, the uh, Chargers have four quarterback sacks today. Grossman a, a little slow starting the season. Oh, this one really hangs up. McConkey, fair catch. Fumbles it. Denver has the ball. And heading is Mark Munford headed for the goal line. Can't advance him up defensively. If it hits the ground. Did he take it out of the air? I'm wondering. Still a muff, Charlie. No, you're right. Can't advance a muff. You're correct. No. Nope. Ball bounces off the chin and right, right into the lap. That's right. It is of a muff. Mark Mumford and Mumford downfield, but they'll bring it back. And McConkey, who's got a little rust on him, tried to feel that one. I wonder if he wasn't looking up into that sun. Sun coming over that side of the stadium may have been right in his eyes as he glanced up. Watch this. Seems to have it fixed, but it comes right off his chin strap. He misjudged it at the last moment. Came down and caught him on the chest and bounced. And Denver with another opportunity. Here's Bobby Humphrey trying to get outside, and he'll lose yardage. Chance for you to check around the National Football League. The winner's all in white. These games played early. See how your favorites did. Here we have 9.56 time remaining. We're in the third quarter. San Diego leading Denver by a score of 9-7. In case you weren't, San Francisco leading Chicago 16-0 in the third. That's the only other game going on. Here is our score in the time in the third. A muff is when a team does not have possession. When they touch the ball, but they do not have possession. If they have possession, it is a fumble, and, and there are different rules applying. That is advanceable. Yes. And this pass is complete to Orson Mobley. Gary Plummer makes the tackle. Gary Plummer, number 50 for San Diego, inside linebacker, leading tackler and probably the least known defender for San Diego. It's really an interesting story because he plays so well and nobody knows about him. On the street, they mistake him for Billy Ray Smith, and he's, they ask him for his autograph. He says, now I just sign Billy Ray and give it to him and keep moving on. Says it's easier. Classic overachiever. Played for Mike Polachak and Lynn... Ron Lynn up at California and then the U Oakland Invaders before he came here. So he knows this defensive staff very well. Third down and nine. Kubiak a timing pattern and it is intercepted. The Chargers have another one. This is Elliott Smith. Smith the rookie. His first interception of the year and he returns it to the 30-yard line. There is a flag down on the field, Charlie, and they are going to discuss what kind of penalty it should be when it occurred. Obviously, if it happened on the run back, the ball will belong to the Chargers. I see Charger defenders staying out on the field. That is not good news for the fans here. Personal foul, roughing the passer. San Diego, first down for Denver. Costly penalty, yardage and possession. Kubiak taking the heat right there, 34-44. Bayless. No, no, no. Who is it? 24. Lester Lyles coming in from the outside. Vincey Glenn also charging in. But good play by the rookie showing you his stuff. Elliot Smith. And they'll take that one out of the record books. And he'll be unhappy oh, yes. about that. Yeah. Well, big opportunity for Kubiak and Denver now as the drive continues. And a first down at the San Diego 13-yard line. Chargers lead at 9-7. Eight and a half minutes left in the third. Kubiak good faking. And he completes the pass to Bratton. 
And Bratton goes to about the seven-yard line. When we ask Mel Bratton who would be most excited about the kind of success he has had this year, he said, my mom. No question about it. She has watched him with pride this year as he has fit in, earned himself starting responsibilities on this Bronco team, along with fellow rookie Bobby Humphrey. They've done a good job. Doug Widell, three rookies, starting and playing very productively for this Denver Bronco offense. Second and four. And here is Bobby Humphrey, and he bounces out, still on his feet. And he'll end up losing more yards. So San Diego now trying to put together the same kind of goal line stand that Denver did with six and a half minutes to go in the second quarter. Frustrated by that roughing call moments ago that robbed them of the turnover, they come back with an emotional play here, and Humphrey makes a mistake. Just stay in there, Bobby. Don't try and make a big play here. Too much time inside. He breaks away, but lots of San Diego Chargers out there. O'Neal, the first one to get a shot on him, takes him down. And it'll be third down and seven. The ball just outside of the 10-yard line. Ron Lynn said this defense has improved tremendously against the run since the insertion of Les Miller, big 300-pounder in that line. The pass dropped off to Sewell underneath the coverage, and the tackle is made at the six-yard line by Elvis Patterson. Gain of four, fourth down and three. Elvis Patterson has heard a lot of boos and a lot of cheers. He's a big play and a bust play kind of cornerback. That was a big play. He likes that kind of play. And now David Treadwell with a field goal attempt. He is 0 for 1, missing for 43 yards out in the ballgame, and this is to take the lead. Treadwell had hit on 26 of 32 field goals. Let's see what he does here. 24 yards away. Right down the middle. And Denver moves on top by 1, 10 to 9. Welcome back to San Diego's Jack Murphy Stadium. I'm Charlie Jones with Merlin Olson, and we talk throughout the throughout the season in reality about different terminology that is used in the game of professional football. Charlie, one of the most difficult things about football is being able to talk without using too many words. So teams begin to use keywords or phrases. In the case of the receivers, they develop what they call a receiver tree, and we'll have a chance to look quickly at it. They just number each of the patterns so that when they talk about a one pattern, you know that's a quick down and in or or a four is a down and out. We'll come back to it in just a moment. Anthony Miller with the kickoff return. Now let's go back to the receiver's tree and you can give us a little more. So in essence, what they're doing with this kind of diagram is being able to say, when they say nine, you know what the pattern is. You don't have to say, you have to do this and go down and in. But Charlie, at this time of year, wouldn't it be nice to decorate that tree a little differently? Not bad. I like that. A season <laughs> greetings. I hope, I'm a, I hope I have that kind of receiver's tree tomorrow morning when I open it up. I want a lot of packages. <laughs> Denver leading 10-9. San Diego with the ball. Tolliver is the quarterback, and he hands off to Marion Butts. And i tell you one thing. This Denver defense has taken the running game away from San Diego that was so effective against Kansas City. Charlie Wade Phillips has done a marvelous job with this defense. And when I looked at this team early in the year, looked at the number of new players, looked at the fact that they had a new system that they were putting in, Wade Phillips was going to try and, and put a system in that was dramatically different than what they had under Joe Collier. I said, it's probably going to take a full year. Well, they have had a marvelous year defensively. The players have taken to the system, and he has fit the system to the players. Marion Butts, 13 carries, 14 yards. Play action fake. Tolliver has time. He goes deep, and it is incomplete. Tim Spencer, the intended receiver. That will please Wade Phillips on the sideline. They've not allowed a 100-yard rusher all year. And nine games have held opponents under 100 yards. That's the whole team under it. They have not allowed a 300-yard passer on the year, Charlie. That's the kind of consistency that they have been able to achieve during this season. And 
Wade Phillips' name being bandied around for some of those open head coaching jobs, and I think as well as it, as well it should, yeah. although the Broncos would hate to lose him. We asked if he was ready, and he said yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. Third down and 13. There's pressure. Nelson, the intended receiver, and the pass is incomplete. So Tolliver continues to struggle against a very pressing, very strong defense for the Denver Broncos. One of the changes in this defense, it's an attacking style, and they really have said, we're not going to try and fool people with the defensive scheme. You're going to have to take them on man-to-man -man and be aggressive, and the Denver players responded very well to that. They've gotten those sacks on the year, Charlie, with those down linemen, not with a lot of stunts like they had to do in the past. Vance Johnson is the return man. Oh, hello. Fair catch, huh? Either that or they're getting serious about field position. No, he's not going to fair catch. To the 50, 45, and out of bounds. He got about 13 yards on the return following that 38-yard punt. So Denver has the ball. Excellent field position. And the score, Denver 10, San Diego 9. We'll be back in just a moment. NBC Sports coverage of the National Football League is brought to you by Bud Light. Everything else is just a light. By Zenith. The quality goes in before the name goes on. And by Mazda Cars and Trucks. Mazda. It just feels right. This is Charlie Jones, Merlin Olsen on Christmas Eve in San Diego. Denver has the lead by one, 10-9. And the ball at the Chargers 44. Play action fake by Kubiak. He completes the pass to Orson Mobley, and Mobley just mows down a couple of Chargers before Gary Plummer finally gets them. Mark Bayless tried to tackle a 265-pound Orson Mobley, and Mobley just swatted him aside like a fly and then proceeded to step downfield and pick up the first down. The ball at the 34-yard line. In case you joined us late, John Elway played into the second quarter and then came out. He's not hurt or anything. They just want to rest him, make sure he does not get hurt. Have Kubiak play some quality time when the game is on the line. Bobby Humphrey. And he is knocked out at the 23, 11 yards, back-to-back -back first downs. Highly productive rookie season for Bobby Humphrey. Many feel that he will rewrite the Broncos running books if he stays healthy. Certainly doing a fine job during this season and on that play as he picks up a first down and Charlie he would not be doing that without some fine play up front and that offensive line has been rebuilt we'll focus on them over the next few plays and tell you a little bit about that rewrite it I tell you he's already made some erasures he's, he's moved some names around yes he has Humphrey again Leslie the ball comes out with San Diego in possession that's Leslie O'Neill well you talk about big play people there's a pro bowler, Leslie O'Neill, came in and stole the football. Larceny on his mind, he went in and stripped it away. The turnover. Watch the play develop. Humphrey goes into the line. They'll stand him up. Now watch O'Neill reach inside right there. 91, look at him. Strips the football away, catches it, and heads up field. Now, if Humphrey is still moving forward, legal play. And that's what the official said. He's still fighting for yardage. He's vulnerable to having that ball stolen. And O'Neill showed pretty good hands, too. Even up, four turnovers apiece. Tolliver fakes gifts to Nelson. Nelson will head fake inside. And he has two yards to the 35-yard line. So San Diego with their own 35. Second down and eight, 353 time remaining in the third quarter. Well, you take those turnovers any way you can get them, Charlie, and Leslie O'Neill will smile about that one. Play very close to being blown dead by the officials, but it was legal.
Second and eight. <laughs> Walker in motion. Incomplete to Anthony Miller. Charlie, Paul Brown, many years ago, said the way to build a football team is to start right in the middle. I think Miller just banged a little bit. I think we'll see him coming up off the ground. Chance to watch the end of that play, and Miller still on the ground. A Pro Bowl player. Let's see if we get, ooh, he that had that knee, knee on the yeah. ground, hit by the defensive back, and kind of stretched that groin. He may have a groin injury. That hurts when you, that knee could go nowhere, and they drove the body down over the, one more look at it. Players in the NFL with amazing flexibilities. I'm constantly amazed at how they survive this kind of collision. But that one hurt. Courtney Hall right here in the center. Watch him use his hands. Watch the way he uses his hands here. Cragen right there slaps him once, twice. Now Cragen goes outside and Holmes comes inside. Courtney Hall takes him on right there. Good job. They're rolled down the at the 44-yard line. First down, San Diego. During the timeout, the play was reviewed, and it was declared that it was a reception by Anthony Miller. Miller is walking around on the sideline during the uh, commercial break. Here's the end of that play. Miller, by the way, up and functioning, too. We had no idea they were reviewing that one. And he's on his knees, Charlie, and they're right about that. He's on his knees, has control of the football. Mecklenburg hit him. The ball bounced away, but the ball is dead at that point. And the line of scrimmage now, the 44, and a first down for San Diego. And here is Nelson stretching to the 50. Second down and four. And this is the replay. Here's the one that they made the reversal on. Catches the football. Down, the ball yeah. is dead at that point yeah. and comes out after the contact. But the minute he's contacted, the ball is deemed dead. Dan Reeves still not happy with that call, but the replay officials felt that it warranted a reversal. Second down and four at the 50. Just over two minutes to go in the third quarter. Play action fake to Butts, a pass far side is to Quinn Early near the first down marker. Charlie, that's one of those interesting situations. In the normal course of play, there may not have been a review, but the injury allowed the luxury in the box up here for the replay officials to yeah. take a close look at it. And they deemed that uh, it was indeed a catch and needed to be reversed. Tom Kelleher is the replay official. It's going to be third down and about a yard to go. And as uh, you were looking at, he was talking to our producer, Larry Cirillo. Now, we talked about Marion Butts. And Marion Butts, last week, 39 carries for 176 yards. We talked about this in the first half. 176 yards. The Denver defense, that's against a very tough Kansas City defense. The Denver defense has held him to 14 yards. They have taken him completely out of the game. Well, they have, Charlie. They certainly have. Third down and one. Spencer is in motion. Tolliver goes deep down the sideline and it is intercepted. The rookie, Steve Atwater. Such an important cog in this defensive scheme. And the youngster with great anticipation pulls one right out of the hands of the intended receiver. Watch him. At the highest point, strips that ball away, gets one foot down. Oh. Did he have a second oh, foot down? Oh, let's look we again. We maybe better look at that one again. Let's look again. Couldn't see from that angle, but maybe there'll be another one to tell us. Here's another look at the it. The interceptor, like a receiver, has to have two feet in bounds. Got to have both feet on the ground after he gets possession of the football. Has the football. There's one, two, two. Yeah, he's there got it is. Yeah, it's, a crossover it's in step. behind. It. It's in behind the body, but definitely an interception. And Tolliver has been intercepted four times by the Denver defense. 
equals his season total of interceptions. First down, Sammy Winder is the ball carrier, and he has about three to the 11. It'll be second down and seven. Tolliver had only given up four interceptions on the season. That's four games for him. He started four games, has had four day today stolen by the Denver defense. Elvis Patterson with the last tackle. Lots of turnovers. Charlie, not, not the kind of play that you're going to put into your record book and be proud of. San Diego has one interception, two fumble recoveries. Denver has four interceptions and a fumble recovery. Well, you've got to learn, and unfortunately, it's a painful experience. Tolliver getting some of that pain here today. Winder with a flag down. Denver has not been penalized in the ballgame. That may change right now. Leslie O'Neill with a tackle. And the reaction of the rookie quarterback in motion against Denver. Their that last interception, that's their first penalty. There's Tolliver. He thinks it's going to be a touchdown. No. Uh, and then the rude awakening. Well, without that yeah. great play by Atwater, that may well yeah. have been a touchdown. Denver's defense really impressive today. They, well, you know, the offense, I think, has been a little bit sluggish, but uh, the defense has really played well. Illegal motion. Number 88. Offense. Penalty is declined. Third down. So Denver still has not been penalized. That's on Clarence K. Charlie, seems to me, as we watched that last play develop, ooh, and it looked like there was motion by one of the Broncos on that yeah. play to get things underway. Better get your flag. One of the officials that yeah. left his yellow flag on the turf. Yeah. Third and six. Winder and Alexander are the spitbacks. Play action. Kubiak, a pump fake, throws. And he's got the first down. 21-yard line, Jeff Alexander. Needed six, he got nine. Alexander at 232 pounds. Bird will get off his man, Vance Johnson, and try to get in on the action. Wait a minute. Pow! Ouch! Oh, <laughs> That one hurt. And then Roy Bennett clinched it. 21-yard line, first down. Bird is only 198 pounds. He's given up about 35 pounds to Jeff Alexander. Sammy Winder. And Winder has about three yards on the play. It will be second down and seven. End of the quarter. All right, this will be the site of the Holiday Bowl and the Penn State team, Joe Paterno few of them still sitting up yep. there. They were here as guests of the Chargers here today. And BYU team not here. No, they arrived tomorrow. Well, no, church. I'm church. They arrived Tuesday. They arrived Tuesday. Yeah, but they were in church today, Charlie. Were you in church today? <laughs> no, I was coming down <laughs> oh, here to work. Right, right. <laughs> Second down. Little shovel pass underneath to Sammy Winder. We talked about the rebuilding of the defense. This offensive line rebuild. Only Ken Lanier, who's in there at that right tackle position, in the same position as last year. They've got Doug Widell, a young rookie, in at that right guard position. And Karts, who had been a guard, has moved in and solidified that center position. Jim Jariga is over there. He was a left tackle and also played briefly at the guard position on the right side, is now the left guard. And Gerald Perry has moved out from a guard position to the left tackle position. Lots of new bodies and new possessions, but they have had a big year offensively. Third down and three. There was a snap. There are flags and whistles. A snap and nobody seemed to move, including the quarterback with the football. Maybe that was the wrong time to talk about the offensive line. <laughs> I think it may have been. The legal procedure, number 72, offense, still third down. That's Keith Cards, the center. Cards shaking his head. Charlie, one of the things that is most impressive is the size that they have added. Stuttered weighed 260, and Perry in his position is 305. That's up 45 pounds. Bishop at 265, replaced by Juriga at 275. That's plus 10. Brian by Carts. He picks up 15 pounds, and I'll finish it after this play. And that is the first penalty on Denver in the ballgame, coming with 13.57 left in the fourth quarter. He's got it, but he's going to be short of the first down. Vance Johnson, great catch. 
Ball thrown low and away, but Johnson will not have the first down. While they're sorting that out, let me just finish. Wydell in place of Carts. Wydell is at 287. Carts at that time last year was 270, so they picked up 17 pounds there. And Lanier, the one who's in the same spot, has gone from 275 to 290. So this is a much, much bigger and more physical offensive line, which has helped them to establish the running game. Was I hasty? in saying they weren't going to make it? I don't think so. Not according to the markers on the far side. No. 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 It'll fourth be fourth down. down. Fourth down. A football and a half to go. Well, you add to that bigger and stronger offensive line a couple of fullbacks, Bratton and Alexander, who are 225 and 232 respectively, and Humphrey, who plays bigger than his 201 pounds. You've got a potent running game to go with Elway's passing game. And Mike Haran will be kicking to Phil McConkey. McConkey, remembering the last one that bounced off his chest, does not want that to happen again. Good kick. Whoa, rifle shot. McConkey takes it over his shoulder. He is back to the seven, out to the 15, returns to the 19 yard line. Haran out kicked his coverage and McConkey almost found room up the middle. 60 yards on the kick, 12 yard return to Santa Exist in Southern California. Here was his early arrival. And we'll be back after these messages from your local station. And Santa spreading some good cheer around the stadium. <laughs> <laughs> a few last-minute wishes being yeah. whispered into Santa's ear. I've got a couple written down. I'm trying to leave a message for him. Billy Joe Toller got a few that have been unanswered here today. <laughs> San Diego very ineffective on first down. High and incomplete. Anthony Miller, the intended receiver. In fact, they've been, <laughs> they've been ineffective on several downs. We can just get Tolliver some receivers about 7-2, Charlie. He's going to have a much better day. He has overthrown repeatedly, and he's had some people open. He's had some good passes, but it just appears that he is not able to harness that strength and put some touch on that ball downfield. That's only about a 35% completion average that you saw on those numbers. And then you saw the interceptions on the far side. His number's not that great coming in. He's a 50% thrower coming in, so much worse here today. Tipped up, he goes to the 21. Ron Holmes just got a hand on his foot. Unfortunately for Holmes, Tolliver will be blown dead, I think, across the line of scrimmage, so it will not count as a sack, but a good play. Holmes, who has really come on after being traded after the second game of the season to Denver from Tampa Bay has been a force in the last half of the season. They are really excited about what he does for that front. Third down and eight. Third down and seven. Darren Nelson, first down at the 35-yard line. Randy Robbins makes the tackle, gain of 13. When Herschel Walker went to Minnesota, Darren Nelson was a part of the payoff package to the Dallas Cowboys. He didn't want to go to Dallas. They traded him here to San Diego. He begins to pay some dividends. I thought he'd have a bigger impact offensively. Well, you've got to learn a whole new system, and that's not easy, and you've got to be able to shape to it quickly. They miss Gary Anderson here. And one of uh, Beathard's early jobs, if he does decide to accept the job, as we think he will, yes, we need to settle the Gary Anderson situation, a holdout through this entire season. Deep to Nelson. He's got it. 15-yard line. 60 yards. Make it 50 yards. Billy Joe Tolliver is told when he gets a matchup with Darren Nelson on a linebacker, in this case, 
Mecklenburg 77. He's got to throw the ball over there. And that's exactly what he does. And nobody there to help as Mecklenburg pulls him down. Well, he doesn't get a chance to enjoy this one until he gets up off the ground. Bam! Oh, oh, oh. Whoa! Face full of helmet. That hurt. At the Denver 15, first down. Broncos lead it by one. 10 to 9. Nelson, 3 for 71. Just under 11 and a half to go. And here is Butts. Flag is down. Butts goes out around the four, maybe the three-yard line, but there's going to be a holding call against San Diego. They'll bring it back. Thrown in the area of the offensive line. But Broderick Thompson was getting up off a block. We'll see who the call is on, but they're going to pull the ball back and throw the flag on the offensive line. Holding. Number 76, offense, 10 yards, still first down. On Broderick. Charlie, I started to talk earlier about Paul Brown and his yeah. philosophy of building an offense. He said you start right in the middle. There is number 76 right there. He'll take the man down. You see him? He just grabbed him right on oh, the spot. That's down. Brooks, <laughs> Michael Brooks. But Paul Brown said you start with a center. He drafted his first pick was Bob Johnson, who was with him for so many years in Cincinnati, and then his second pick, a quarterback. Well, they kind of have that same philosophy here in San Diego. First down, back of the 25. Nelson gets to the line of scrimmage. That's it. Be second down and 20. Simon Fletcher with the tackle. Courtney Hall, a 21-year-old center. Billy Joe Tolliver, young, strong-armed quarterback whose head is ins and outs today, but certainly with a great deal of promise and with a great big boomer back there by the name of Marion Butts, who has not been impressive today, Charlie, but I think has real promise as a running back. They've got a pretty good middle of that offense going. Second and 20 at the 25. Denver leads 10-9. 10-41 and counting in the ballgame. This is complete at the 15-yard line to Anthony Miller. And another flag is down on the far sideline, back at the 27-yard line. Good drive by the San Diego offense. Illegal formation. The end is covered up. Now, an ineligible man by virtue of moving someone up on the outside. What it means is the end of the line where the end of the outside receiver needs to be a full yard off the ball. The right. And if he's up on that if he's up on that line of scrimmage, then only he can go downfield from that side. That's right. So you put an ineligible man downfield. Exactly. You see that <laughs> I don't know if I said that right, Charlie. Dan it was Henning, close. Dan Henning furious <laughs> on the sideline. No, you did say it right. That's what that's what happens because once that the inside in moves downfield, he is ineligible and becomes an illegal formation. You could call it either way. Fowler with lots of time, throws back underneath the covers. McEwen to the 15 to the 14. 16 yards. It'll be third down and nine at water with the tackle. Good balance, good feet by McEwen, who's had several big plays today. He's the outlet man right here. Tolliver finally goes back to him. Watch him break out of this tackle right here. Just pulls out. That's Scott Curtis, number 58, gets away from him and gets down. Picks up a good chunk of that yardage. Gets down inside the original marker. It's going to be third and about eight and a half, nine yards to go. It's complete. First down. Four-yard line, Darren Nelson. Randy Robbins brings him down. With all of Tolliver's problems today, you can see why the coaches like him. They like what he can do when he is on, when his timing is on. Good delivery here. Zip. Quick. He really rifled that ball. There's no way for Randy Robbins to recover. And remember now, he is throwing a ball with bruised ribs that he came out of the ball game. It was all wrapped up inside. He's back in there. Tell you something else. His teammates like him. You they like to play for him.
Here is Nelson on the sprint. Oh, he wanted to reverse and come back inside and was decked. Atwater was right there waiting at the pass. Steve Atwater joining that secondary, and he and Dennis Smith really put some crunches on people earlier in the year. Top left side of your screen, number 27. Watch him accelerate here. Takes the back side. Darren Nelson wanted to cut it back. Atwater said, no, no way. This Denver defense continues to impress. Although this has been a very good drive for Tolliver and San Diego. They can punch it in here. They can light up that scoreboard and go ahead. It is complete and short. Braxton. Nelson and Braxton collide, and Braxton wins. Nelson down about the three. It'll be third down and goal to go. Braxton flipping Nelson out of bounds. Wade Phillips calling the defenses from the sideline. There you see the call going in. There were some times earlier in the year they were having a few problems, and some of the players said, maybe we don't have enough defenses. Wade Phillips said, hey, we're not going to beat them with defenses. We just got to play better. And they've responded to that kind of thinking in Denver. Spencer, the first back through. Did he get it? No signal. A big call for Dan Henning. If he is not into the end zone, it's going to be fourth and short. Do you go for the touchdown here? Go for the field, kick goal. the field goal. You trail by one, kick the field goal. Well, they had four shots, three shots down there earlier, and they didn't get a touchdown with three shots inside. Let's see how close Tim Spencer gets to that goal line. He's just going to burrow inside. Mumford there along with about two or three other shirts, but they did a good job, and they're going to go for it, Charlie. They're going for the touchdown. They've on. gone for it on 17 occasions, and they've only made it five times, but this would be a big confidence builder or perhaps a confidence breaker. Spencer. Second touchdown. Effort. Second effort, Tim Spencer. play 81 yard drive those who were with us earlier will remember how Denver had dominated on the line of scrimmage in that earlier goal line stand not so here good job up front by Courtney Hall and Broderick Thompson and David Richards in particular and there's the touchdown and the extra point is good and San Diego has regained the lead and we'll be back with a kickoff in a moment NBC Sports coverage of the National Football League is brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By Interstate Batteries. For a dealer near you, call 1-800-CRANK-IT. And by Budweiser, the king of beers. Remember, know when to say when. The man himself, most valuable player of the season, San Diego leads it 16 to 10. Bell and Carrington are the deep backs and the short kick. It's got to go 10 yards before or be touched by a member of the receiving team. And Denver has it. Watch Barr, just a little drag kick. A soccer-style kick, and he took it a little bit. Or, no, he didn't. It had gone 10 yards. Charles. He had it. He, he had, had it. it. He gone. couldn't hold on to he it. He had a chance yes. at it. Had his hands on the football, but it looks like it's stripped away. Five yards. It needs to cross the line. It is across the line, and there's the shot that stripped it away right there. Mumford, number 51. Well, that's a great play. Breaks it yeah. out, and then he's the one that strips it out underneath. We've got a Charger player down on the field. I believe it's Elvis Patterson, yes. Maybe we can go back while Patterson is being helped and look at that touchdown play. 
a nice job of blocking up front. Let's go back and take a peek at it. Watch now as you get Hall stepping over here. Broderick Thompson will come behind him to block, and David Richards will take the linebacker. Spencer goes through the crack they create. They make some room for him inside. Good blocking right there, and you see the result. He cuts in behind the block on the linebacker and just gets great second effort. Well, I tell you, he got close to the goal line before he got that last surge, but I don't think he'd have been in without that great second effort. And there's the toast, Elvis Patterson. Denver has the ball, the San Diego, just inside the San Diego 45-yard line. Betsy Glenn has moved up to the corner. And uh, Kubiak kind of... False start. Kind of lead back. Quarterback. Yes. Got to get him for a false start. Because the defense came with him. Well, last time these two teams played, Elway false suckled start. the defense Number with eight. a hard count. Got him about six Five times. <laughs> Retribution here, perhaps? Well, I don't know. I think he, I think he wanted the ball. I think somebody missed... Uh, Kubiak, I think. Nobody else was moving. I think Kubiak had I the wrong... He missed the count. He missed the count himself. And uh, he did, yes. An and embarrassing it, moment. And you're half a step away, and you wonder where the ball is, and then you realize what happened. First and 15. Pass is complete over the middle to Johnson. Whoa. Second down, 11. Give us a chance now to check out all the scores, the 10-minute ticker. The winners being in white, in case you joined us late. In the uh, AFC, Buffalo will be at Cleveland in one of the playoff games. Denver will host the winner of the wild card game. Houston is in the wild card game. They'll play either Pittsburgh or Cincinnati. That'll be decided tomorrow night. The Giants and San Francisco are in the playoffs. The wild card in the NFC. Rams at Philadelphia. The other team, Minnesota or Green Bay, to be decided tomorrow night. If Minnesota wins, it's Minnesota. If they lose, it's Green Bay. Kubiak dropped at the 49. Second sack of the day for Grossman, who continues with his late season drive. And the fifth sack for the Chargers. And don't forget Championship Monday, the Hall of Fame Bowl, Auburn, Ohio State. Merle and I will be at the Fiesta Bowl with Jimmy Cephalo, Nebraska, Florida State, the Orange Bowl, Colorado, Notre Dame, O.J. and Bob, the Insiders. They will be at the Orange Bowl. There they are, and they'll be hosting that whole day. That's going to be a lot of fun. A lot of great football that day. We'll have reports also for you from the Sugar Bowl and the Orange Bowl. Rose Bowl, excuse me. Kubiak tipped incomplete. Mark Jackson, the intended receiver. And again, if you join us late, Ricky Natillo re-injured that uh, that kneecap and is not playing here and we certainly do hope that he uh, I is saw healthy him in the and well room before the game charlie he said he's hoping that he'll be back for the playoffs but he was not smiling no. a lot he's having some real problem with the same knee cracked the uh, kneecap on early in the year and missed a bunch of ball games with here's the kick and he made good progress too coming back san diego will stay away it goes out of bounds and they will mark it out at the 19-yard line. Just over six minutes to go in the season. And the Chargers lead it 16 to 10. The numbers of Billy Joe Tolliver not impressive except for one. 260 yards. And there's a reason that that number is impressive against this defense. Marion Butts, no game. Mecklenburg was there to meet him, and Atwater came up to help. Why is that number impressive? Bro? Well, Charlie, if they can load another 40 yards behind that, Tolliver would become the first quarterback to throw for 300 yards against this Denver defense all year long. So the rookie's percentage has been a little bit suspect, but certainly he has put together a couple of very fine passes and, and plays with a lot of courage like that. Out of Boyd, Texas. They were, he and his teammates, the 1983 AA champion Yellow Jackets down there. They still love him. They talk about him down there a lot. Play action fake. Incomplete. Anthony Miller, his favorite receiver. Rick Dennison was there along with Steve Atwater. 
one of the bits of fun that they have had in the locker room this week. Sid Brooks, the equipment man, had challenged Red there to a race. They were going to run right after the ball game. And he conned him into a five-yard head start. And Sid Brooks, a real character, the equipment man on the sideline for... Well, you see if we can spot him over there. He's got white suspenders on. He's not hard to find. Well, we'll find him anyway in a bit. But they were supposed to race right after the game <laughs> on the field. Billy, <laughs> Billy Joe's ribs might give him a little bit of a disadvantage. It's a tradition. Usually they do it on, on the Friday practice of the last week. Darren Nelson, a tearaway jersey. He'd have had five or six more yards. Not legal anymore in the NFL. Randy Robbins with the tackle. And it will be fourth down. There's, There's Sid. Sid Brooks. Yeah, the, the, uh, the suspenders are there. They're, they're covered up. Yeah, they're covered I can up. see them underneath. The dapper man himself. One of the real characters in yes. the NFL. And the equipment men of the NFL often like psychiatrists in the uh, locker room. Mm -hmm. they, uh, the trainers and the equipment men do a valuable job of buoying the spirits and nursing the wounds of a team, especially in a losing season. Hank Elisic kicking to Vance Johnson. Punch style kicker on the ground. Ooh, Big hop down. taken at the 29. Vance to the 30 and then out of bounds at the 36 yard line. 42 yards on the kick and that included the bounce, a six yard return. A rookie in the NFL, a 14 year career in the Canadian Football League, started when he was 17 has been punching the football like that for a long, long while. Now, we come to that point that we must talk about Denver and the playoffs. How do you, uh, how do you assess their chances? Well, Charlie, I think one of the things that might be happening on the field today, if they lose this ball game, that might be just a little wake-up call for Denver that they can't be careless and expect to win. Certainly the quality of the teams they're going to face in the playoffs, I'm sure better than what they faced here in San Diego today. And I think Dan Reeves, no matter what happens in this game, is going to have plenty of ammunition to sit down and say, let's wake up, let's get going. He has reminded his team of a year when they went 13-3, and opened up at home in the playoffs against Pittsburgh, and lost that ball game. So uh, he's going to be talking, I like Denver in the playoffs, and I like them for a couple of reasons. They're physical, and they're playing excellent football, and at home, they are tough. Good football team. I like them to go all the way to the Super Bowl. In fact, I pick them to win the Super Bowl. Ball is airborne, and it is incomplete. They're going to rule it as a pass. His arm is moving forward. Now, Charlie, I don't know whether that ball came off his hand before the arm started forward or not. Maybe we can see. Good quarterbacks, even when they feel that pressure on the arm, will continue the movement of the arm. Burt Grossman with the pressure. Grossman again. Well, it, it was he was low. So quick. Yes. Grossman said when he came into the NFL, I expect to be the best defensive lineman in the NFL. He said that's why I was the first defensive lineman drafted this year. Well, he is starting to have that kind of impact, certainly in this ball game and in the last half of the season. And we talk about impact players, and those are the kind of plays that they must make. QBX pass over the middle is complete to Vance Johnson. He goes to the 45-yard line. It'll be third down. Look at that little quirt on the back of Vance Johnson's head. I've always, Charlie, I've wondered what would happen if somebody grabbed that pigtail. It hurt. Tackled him with that. <laughs> that would hurt. He's a, he's a real character, an artist. Usually he has it tucked underneath, though. Well, has his own way of thinking, his own way of acting, but he has been the, the clutch receiver for the Broncos this year. Came into this game with 70 run receptions and has had a pile of them today. Sammy Winder and Jeff Alexander are the two setbacks. Good Play way. action fake. First down. Good Run down. all the way. This game is the property of the National Football League. Denver Broncos and San Diego Chargers, all rights reserved. Today's telecast presented by authority of the National Football League. Intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the San Diego Chargers and the National Football League is prohibited. First down at the 45. 
3.20, time remaining in the game. Kubiak, far side, he's got the first down. That's Vance Johnson again, 11 yards. And another thing that's happening for Denver is that they need Kubiak in the playoffs is that he has had an opportunity here as we take another look at the throw to Vance Johnson. Oh, and he just drives the defender off this Gil Bird and comes back and takes the reception. As he has had quality time. He has played in this game when the game was on the line, like he did in the game of Washington. And he knew he was going to play in this game. I mean, so often he's had to come up at the last minute. This time he got warning, and it's different. The chemistry is different. It's a different mindset. Oh. Less, no, it's Lee Williams. Yes. His 13th sack of the year. I think 14. 14th. He got one earlier, Charlie. Right. And he was one of the co-leaders in the AFC coming into this ball game. And six sacks for the Chargers. Six sacks for the Chargers today. Williams, number 99, doesn't like playing inside. Playing on Jeriga in that situation, blows him away and drives over the top of Kubiak. Guards are used to facing big fat guys, 300 pound bulldozers who aren't quick and aren't very athletic. Yours <laughs> truly, Lee Williams. He says, I'm a, I'm a defensive end. I'm not a tackle. Well, the tackles of the league are not going to take kindly to that, Charlie. Well, we won't tell anybody. He said it, all right? Yeah. This one is complete to Mark Jackson. And Jackson is to the 30 yard line. He's still going to be about six yards shy of the first down. He picks up 15. Let me go back to that quote by Lee Williams. In, se in some ways, he's right about that. And you know why that is, Charlie? When they allowed holding, legalized holding, in my opinion, they, what they had to do inside is you almost have to pick up that guard and drive over the top of him to close down the pocket. And Lee Williams is right about that. You had to get much more physical inside. Used to be if you tried to drive over the guard, that was silly. But not true anymore. You've got to be big enough to go over the top. He's picked up 15 pounds so he can play inside. Two-minute warning. Chargers lead it by six. And here's today's most valuable player sponsored by Budweiser. It's Santa Claus from the North Pole. And Budweiser will make a contribution to the United Way in behalf of Santa and in behalf of all of the other MVPs selected in today's game. I must tell you, he was my, he was my first choice. <laughs> there he was. Well, the, man, Charlie, the man is coming tonight. You know that. I'm is, expecting him. I'm leaving good. out milk and cookies like always. He is first in the hearts of so many at this time of year. I don't miss a trick. A lot of kids are going to be happy. I, can you buy Santa's friendship? I don't know. What do you think, Jacks? <laughs> if I leave milk cookies in a check, let me find out. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, for Denver and Kubiak and Reeves... A simple thought, if we're going to win the game, let's get this one in the end zone. Christmas Eve, you'll have your whole family with you tonight. That's going to be good. Mine is spread around the country. Julie and Leon are in Denver, and Chuck and Aaron are in Los Angeles, and Ann and I are going to spend our first Christmas, just the two of us, in 32 years. Well, would that it were possible that all families could, could be, be together, together on, yes. a, on a Christmas Eve. We know that's not possible. And, but for those who are Merry Christmas, for those who can't do it, and even merrier Christmas. You you deserve it. Going deep to the corner. It is incomplete. Michael Young with the sure hands. The intended receiver. Vincey Glenn was there. For San Diego, Lee Williams, you're right. 14 sacks. And we now have checked around the conference. And he wins the sack championship of the AFC. Very, very important numbers. Mark down that on your map. Dennis Munition on the phone. There checking around the league to have that for us. There he is. And uh, again, coming from the inside, has been playing tackle a great deal this year. The sacks are tougher from the inside. Most of the people on that high sacking list, linebackers like Simon Fletcher, for example, from Denver. Fourth and five. Another sack. Another sack. Leslie O'Neill. O'Neill was only one sack behind Williams coming in. That's the seventh sack of the day. O'Neill will make his presence felt on that sack list as well. He has two of the game, came in with ten and a half, so he now has twelve and a half. Ten and a half, and a half. That's what I have on my notes. We'll double check that. Is that right? All right. 
Now, Ron Lynn, I think, going to be very proud of his troops and the way they have performed today. And San Diego with a six-point lead and a minute and 50 seconds left. Have the ball at their own 39-yard line. They just want to run out the clock. And Marion Butts has three. It'll be third down and seven at the 42. Broncos quickly call timeout as they would like to preserve a little time on that clock. And we'll take a timeout and be back on this Christmas Eve in just a moment. After a scoreless first quarter, Denver led at the half, 7-6, and after three by one, 10-9. Chargers have the lead now 16 to 10. The numbers of Billy Joe Tolliver, four interceptions, no touchdown, but he has thrown for 260 yards. And Butts carries to the 41. He'll lose a yard, and Denver will stop the clock again. Now Dan Reeves knew when we talked to him yesterday that it was going to be difficult to motivate his Broncos. It has been. This has not been an emotional game for them. There's been some sloppy play in particular by the offense. A number of turnovers on the day. See the timeouts remaining. Reeves will find a way to use that performance to help motivate his team as they now prepare for the playoffs. Maybe this will be that wake-up call. Maybe it'll get them jacked up, getting them going. Turnovers, Denver 4, San Diego 5. We have 1 minute and 37 seconds time remaining here. And in a few weeks, Merle and I will be at the Hula Bowl. Your brother, you played in it. Your brother, Phil, also played in the Hula Bowl. And he told us that his roommate was the quarterback of the opposition. Well, not only that, but he knocked him out of the game. That's I mean, right. that's, when you knock your roommate out of the game, you're in trouble. But it's really a great game and a lot of fun. And, and be with us for that one here on NBC. Third down. Here's the reverse with Miller. Fumble. Fumble. Ooh. Denver has the ball at the 40-yard line. The one thing you don't want to do in that situation is turn the football over. Michael Brooks pulled it loose. And the turnover bites the Chargers. He got it. The Broncos will have one more chance to punch their touchdown home. A risk running the ball outside. Anthony Miller had made two big gains on that play today. This time, he makes a big mistake. There is a Bronco hand in there. Brooks recovered the Bronco hand that reached in and pulled it loose. Stripped the football away as they have been doing in Denver for a long, long time. At the San Diego 40-yard line, first down, trailing by six with a minute 28. Kubiak goes deep, has a man open. Flag is down at the four. Michael Young is going to be pass interference against San Diego. Vince Glenn, number 25, forced into play at the corner because of Patterson being hurt. He is not a match over there. He's a safety, trying to play corner. Michael Young pass gets away, and Vince Glenn nails him San Diego. before First the ball down arrives. Denver. And it'll be a 35-yard penalty to the five. First down and goal to go. But he did save a touchdown. He certainly did. And in terms of that, may have done the only thing he had a choice for. And he is forced to play out of position. Tough, tough San Diego play. Now they've got to make the goal line stand. 121 left. Sewell's going to throw the pass. And it's incomplete. Another flag down, Charlie. Another flag. And I think they're going to call interference again. One of the linebackers, it might have been Plummer, getting there late. Pass interference. Defense in the end zone. The ball will be placed on the one-yard line. First down and goal. First down and goal, a pair of pass interference calls. We believe that one on Vincey Glenn, too. Yeah, I don't know about that. Well, look, it's right at the back of the end zone. Sewell throwing the pass. 
I'm You're not right, sure about that. that was, that's 25. It's Vince Glenn, but I don't think. I don't think it was. Ball. Pat Kelly was the intended receiver. You're right. It's 25, and they are not going to get in with that one. That's Jeff Alexander. 110. Plenty of time on the clock. Second down. Same area of the field, let's, not at the same end where Denver had their brilliant goal line stand a while ago. Let's take another look. At, let's take a look at that play in the end zone. I'm not all, I'm not that positive that was pass interference. There was no question the one before this oh, yeah. was interference. But this time, I think Betsy Glenn arrives oh, right with boy. the ball and strips it away. I agree with you, Charlie. That's a bad call. Alexander, there is no signal from the officials. I thought he got in. I did, too. There it is. Yes, it's official. There's some fisticuffs going on down there. Alexander finally throws the ball into the stands. He'll pay for that. But he doesn't care. He's got his touchdown. The kick to break the tie. The fumble. Two pass interference calls. Alexander from a yard out. We're tied 16-16. 35 seconds left. David Treadwell to break the tie. He has not missed an extra point this year. He misses wide right. Unbelievable. Overtime on Christmas Eve. You gotta be kidding. And Dan Reeves in total disbelief now begins to rally the troops what an amazing final two minutes of this game he just pushed it off to the right and left it he pushed it off to the right and left it for the first time all year treadwell who led the afc in scoring who's headed for the pro bowl has misfired on an extra point and look at him he cannot believe it either Here's that touchdown run. Well, we'll... We sprinkle it with a little, a little Santa magic. Claus dust, a little magic dust, and we'll bring it back out and show it to you again. Here, Here it, is. it is. Orson Mobley going inside from his motion position, and there's oh. a second effort yeah. again. Jeff Alexander stopped once before the goal line, simply twisted his body, and surged in. And the kickoff. Low bouncing kick to... Break up the rhythm of any kind of return. This is Jamie Holland. Holland to the 20, the 25, and he goes out of bounds with 31 seconds away from overtime. Now here's the situation. If it does end in a tie, then there'll be uh, three minutes between the end of the ball game and the start of overtime, and we would play one period unless there is a score. If there's a score of any kind, safety... Field goal, touchdown, the game is immediately over if there's no score at the end of a fifth quarter. Another full 15 minutes. Then they will go into the books as a tie. Tolliver, 18 of 44, 260 yards, four interceptions. Yes. You have to wonder if maybe San Diego didn't get a little cute with that reverse call for the third time, Charlie, but they have got an opportunity now to still win this ball game. Tolliver, wide open is McCune. And San Diego will stop the clock, 21 yards. Barr has been hot today. It made his longest field goal of the year. If they can get one more like that, they can get him in range. He's hit from 22, 42, and 53. He missed one 40-some-odd yarder. 52, he was short from 52. 52, yes. missed the 52. Twenty-two seconds, and the score, Denver 16, San Diego 16. The ball just shy of the 50-yard line. What a strange finish to this <laughs> yes. ball game. As you look at Dan Reeves, I'm sure Dan Reeves is saying, maybe this is a bad dream. 
Maybe I just dreamed that, that, that we missed that extra point. Scrooge said that also if you read Charles Dickens, yes. 16-16, <laughs> the score. 22 seconds. Back underneath the coverage, 42-yard line. A gain of eight. Quick timeout. They're picking it down there. They're not far away from field goal range now. And San Diego will have one timeout remaining. The Broncos also have one timeout remaining. They would like to save their last timeout to bring in the field goal team. Another completion of 10 yards, 11 yards, around the 30-yard line. You're within range. And you've got time. And he's hit from 42 and 53 today. Working across the middle, and you have this luxury when you have timeouts. Without timeouts, you've got to go to the sideline. Darren Nelson, pass down specialist. He's done that so well over the years for the Minnesota Vikings. Does it here for the San Diego Chargers. And Tolliver, in spite of his rocky start, Charlie, has shown us flashes today of the kind of brilliance that encouraged the Chargers to take him with a second pick last year and causes them to believe that he is the quarterback of the future. In case you're wondering, we mentioned that Chris Barr hit from 53, his longest of the year. His career long is 55, but that was a long time ago. That was 1979, 10 years ago. And the last time out at the 33-yard line. It's going to be about a 50-yard field goal. Quinn Early on the receiving end, 11 seconds. Did Tolliver get enough for his 300 yards? I'll bet he's awfully close to it. 299. <laughs> well, well. And uh, the record. You want a recount? Billy the, Joe wants a recount. He'd the, like the, to be over the three. Go back today. through the film and look for one more. However, however, if we go into overtime, the yardage will count, and then he will get the 300. If he has an opportunity, his Christmas present, one, one yard. yard. Give, give him the go. yard. Charlie. Wrap it up. Give him the yard. Now, right now, what they're thinking about, and maybe they're going to try one more shot, one more pass, Ooh, 11 seconds. 11 seconds, yeah. They've got to kill the clock. But they don't have any more timeouts. They've got to kill They've got to kill the clock. They'll either go to the sideline or perhaps try someone deep. But it's got to be a clock-killing play. Otherwise, there's no time. I think I'd kick it now. <laughs> Underneath the coverage and out of bounds. Six seconds. And now the field goal team will come out. Anthony Miller, the main man. And Miller, whose fumble enabled the Broncos to pick up that touchdown, will come streaking left to right. There he is. No chance. Wayman Henderson, 24, stretching out. But Anderson picks up what Miller picks up that extra six yards, makes this a much more makeable field goal. And the gift for Tolliver. The gift for Tolliver, he got the extra yards. There He's over is. 300. There it is. 45 yards away for the win. Yes, for San Diego. And a game that started with so little emotion ends on an emotional high for the San Diego Chargers. Chris Barr with four field goals. For the Chargers, Charlie, a chance to build off these last two victories as they look into 1990. For the Broncos, just a bad day at the office. They've got more football to play. They'll be playing it at home in the playoffs. And the winning 45-yard field goal. What a nice way for Chris Barr to finish his season. And to celebrate Christmas.
It'll make you mutter to yourself. The final score, San Diego wins it 19 to 60. And while we were away, a gathering of the Fellowship of Christian Athletes from both teams. Well, a chance for them to be grateful for all the blessings they share as we are on this Christmas Eve. And tonight, it's a night of holiday specials on NBC. First, sing along and celebrate a Muppet family Christmas, my favorite. And then it's a special one-hour Christmas episode of, of ALF, followed by super bloopers and new practical jokes, then a Bill Cosby salute. So celebrate the holidays with us tonight here on NBC. It's the end of the season for the Chargers. For the Denver Broncos, they'll be moving on to the playoffs. San Diego wins it, breaking the tie. 19 to 16, the final score from San Diego Jack Murphy Stadium on Christmas Eve.